Hello everyone, and welcome to our um, first stream, Q&A, gameplay, whatever you want to call it, segment for Scablivian in 2023. Hope you're all doing well. If you haven't yet, um, please go watch our trailer that we uploaded uh, last Sunday. If you somehow missed it, we announced a release here for Skyblivion. Uh, we've been working this project, some of us anyway, uh, for a couple of years. And um, it's finally gotten to the point where we felt comfortable to share with you uh, the date or the year wherein we want to release a project uh, and a, a year that we think we can make based on the amount of work that we have left. Um, now, of course, the trailer is very nice and shiny, but today we want to show you what the game actually looks like and actually plays like. Um, not just the, the, the nice shiny bits, but also some of the areas that are work in progress, which we are excited to share with you because I think it's a very uh, rare thing in game development to be able to watch a game uh, be made as it was. Um, so we're quite looking forward to that, as well as we'll do a few miscellaneous quests along the way. Um, so I really hope that uh, that, that sounds like a, a good way to spend the next, I don't know, hour, two hours, three hours? Um, throughout the stream we will be taking your questions. Um, I will introduce in a little bit uh, a few other uh, developers on the Skyblivian project. They work in different departments. Um, level design, quests, and 3D, um, but I'll introduce them a little bit later. Um, for now, welcome, get comfortable, um, we're gonna be here a while, and uh, yeah, let me, let me boot up the game. Love the trailer, very, very happy to hear that. I have um, prepared a character for tonight, um, so we will be uh, loading right into uh, into our pre-made character here. Um, the loading screen you can ignore, this will be fixed, it's one of many things that are currently a work in uh, progress. And having said that, um, this feels like a good opportunity to actually introduce some of the people that we have with us tonight. So without further ado, let me switch to Discord. Am I no longer muted? I'm not. Hey guys, um, I just told everyone what we're going to be doing tonight. And I figured this would be a good opportunity for you all to introduce yourselves to the stream. Hi everyone, I'm Dogsong, I'm a 3D lead on Skyblivian. Hi everyone, I'm a Fish Fiend, I'm one of the uh, Quest Department members. Hello everyone, my name is Sex Riesler and I'm, I'm one of the two lead landscape and slash interior leads. Alright, thanks guys, and thanks for, uh, for being here tonight as well. Um, yeah, good, a good way to start might be to tell you where we are. Uh, we're currently in the Heartlands, which is the area around the Imperial City, which we can see through the trees behind us. This is actually the part of the game where you will more or less start after you finish the tutorial dungeon behind us. And here we have our uh, willing Nord that uh, is gonna, you know, help us play through the game today. Um, a few interesting bits to maybe uh, touch upon before we do anything else is some of the things we can see on screen. In front of us is the first alien ruin, Vilverin, that we're going to be coming across. Um, our character won't be looking like this when you come out of the sewers, to be fair. Uh, we are wearing some very, very fancy armor. This is actually the, uh, the fine steel armor, uh, a more rare armor set in the game, only worn by a few elite. On my hip, we have the Blade of Umbra, which you'll uh, you'll see in action in a little bit. It's one of the unique Daedric artifacts that we have overhauled for Oblivion. To be honest, I'm pretty excited to show you what it does, because it's my favorite weapon in the game right now. 
Um, as well as a cool little shield called the Grey Aegis. Aegis? I don't know, I'm not English, so I'm probably mispronouncing it. Um, which is a unique item which has 100% magic resist on it. Another thing that I think might be interesting to showcase is a mechanic that people tend to ask about a lot. Um, a mechanic that was in Oblivion. Um, and a mechanic that we are missing in, uh, in Skyrim. Which is uh, underwater combat. Luckily though, not uh, all enemies in the game will be uh, below the water. As you can see, there's plenty of enemies to be found in the wilderness and a lot of different ways for you to deal with them. For instance, how about using gold brands to <laughs> give them a, uh, a little slash of fire from a distance. Which again is one of our uh, many unique artifacts which uh, Heir of Septims, a modder from the Nexus, has been working on. Um, if that's not really up to your liking, uh, there's a few other weapons we have. Like, what's another good one? The Rose. Oh yeah, this one's pretty cool too. It, <laughs> it temporarily spawns a random Daedra to help out in combat. Very, very handy. For those interested, we actually have developer diaries on um, on the project where we go over some of the um, some of the changes that we're making to the game, some of the things that we're adding. Um, and one of those developer diaries actually covered what you just saw, which are the unique weapons uh, in the game, um, the effects that they have, and and kind of like the the origins. Uh, and why we decided to give some weapons a very cool overhaul and others we kind of left as is. Um, if you've watched the trailer and if you haven't, again, please do watch it. Uh, also, what would really help us out is if you like the trailer video, if you leave a comment, um, because that way YouTube will maybe share it with more people. Uh, but in that trailer, we mentioned 2025 to be the release uh, year for Skeblivion. Um, and as nice as all this looks, it's issues like this sometimes that uh, make it so that we don't feel confident releasing it before that time. You know, there's still broken stuff. But this is nothing compared to some of the things we'll show you in a bit. Like this area is actually pretty far along in development. Uh, I'm pretty confident with uh, how this area is shaping up, but there's still areas in the game that are not yet done, uh, which we will uh, take a look at later. Uh, but for now, let me quickly get rid of these guys. And here we can see Umbra in action. So Umbra is a sword that essentially can suck up unlimited souls if you have soul gems in your inventory. Uh, not only does it suck up the souls of creatures, people, and other living things that you kill, it will also suck up souls of any living thing that dies near you, either by your hand or someone else's, which is pretty interesting and very different from what it was in Oblivion. Having said that, I've been rambling for a while. Is there maybe um, some questions from the chat or anything that you guys want to add to uh, to the conversation? No, I've just been reading the chat for questions and stuff. On that See, note... People, is ask, people are asking about spellcrafting. So spellcrafting is actually in the game. Um, maybe we can show it to you later? Yeah, and it will be available in the mage skill, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna go to this little alien rune. That way we can show off some of the... Um, Loading screen artwork. Oh, actually, maybe go over the map first. People always love seeing the map. We have new UI artwork, so all the different cities have different uh, map markers, which is maybe not that exciting, but for us it's pretty cool. Um, and here we can see some of the regions in uh, 
in oblivion so we have the the snowy Jarl mountains we have the heartlands where we are now the fall forest which is a really cool interesting location that we'll see very soon clovian highlands here gold coast west weld we have blackwoods at the bottom the nibbon the Valus mountains but for now let's uh let's go to enga we have the very pretty loading screens that actually doig you uh you worked on I did. Uh, surprisingly finicky to fit in place, and you'll see right there we've got some holding text. Uh, so currently we've uh, got the text from Oblivion, but not everything necessarily applies when it's in the new Skyrim world. So some, some mechanics will be uh, slightly different, and as we're going through development there'll be uh, more things or less things in some places, which mean might be putting in place. Uh, I did just see a good question, um, which was, um, can uh, novices volunteer? I think we'd um, uh, sort of, ideally, we um, look through our volunteers by sort of either their portfolio or something they've put together. So the very best way, really, I think for most areas you could apply would be sort of doing your own mod and not anything sort of the area you're interested in, um, be that making a weapon or doing a quest or some landscaping. Um, and then uploading that to um, maybe Nexus mods, sending that through to us. And there's also lots of other really good resources online if anyone wants to learn modding. Yeah, it's the I... Arcane University. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I think we're actually we aren't we gonna have our own section on Nexus? Yeah, I've, I've spoken with the uh, the Nexus staff, and they uh, they want to give us a dedicated uh, mod page category, uh, essentially. Yeah, so that would be great for people who want to uh, mod it after we release. Yeah, and something I'd like to add on the topic of uh, with, with people volunteering and, and learning how to basically pick up skills to help out. I think most of the people that are on the team today, when they joined the Skyblavion project or when they applied, they barely knew what they were doing. Um, I know that when I started Skyblavion, all I could do was make an NPC and nav mesh. Um, so, if, if you're willing to put in the time, you can learn... I wouldn't say anything, but you can learn qu quite, a, quite a lot. I, I if you that. If you apply yourself. Yeah, I agree. 100%. So, I, I didn't do any modding, and then I, uh, I st tried to play Oblivion, and uh, couldn't uh, too much because of the blocky faces. And uh, I think I uh, watched one of Kyle's streams, and six months later, I watched another Sky Oblivion dev doing some work, and I just thought, I really want to do that and so I sort of minded putting stuff together, did some demos, uh, volunteered, got um, got in and been learning from there. So definitely expecting, there's definitely a learning curve but I yeah. it's fully within um, everyone's, uh, everyone's gift if you're interested to give it a go. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that's also like, you, you, you might know 3D and stuff but you still, when you learn the programs that are for Skyrim, it's really satisfying. Absolutely. It can be very specific as well, so making a 3D model for Skyrim can be very different to making one for Unreal Engine. Yeah, for sure. So Especially uh, when you don't have PBR and stuff like that, you have yes, to work yeah. around it. So uh, all the shiny weapons you'll be seeing, it's uh, lots of little tricks and gimmicks that have been picked up by the modding community over the years, and we're all, all learning from each other, and um, making new documentation to help, help other people out. There's yeah, I, um, I saw a question of someone who asked if I could show off the uh, the elven armor, so I'm taking a minute to to do just that. Hope you like what we did with it. I'm just gonna point. If, yeah, you continue. <laughs> even on a, a bulky Nord, like the 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 armor is designed to be kind of like uh, elegant, I guess, and this Nord is like as bulky as they get. But even on him, it looks uh, pretty damn good. Especially, I like the, I love the the combination with the shield. Because yeah. the shield has a bit of gold in it as well. Uh, you saw a question about plays playing on Steam Deck. Yeah, that works. Have you tested it? Yes. Oh, really? I didn't even know that. <laughs> I mean, you can, I just copied my whole build over to it. So it works oh, that's cool. out of the box. It's I mean, it's guy like so. Yeah, it works for sure. That's good to know. Yes. I. I've seen a question pop up a couple of times about the uh, big underground castle in the trailer. Uh, that's meant to be Manamarco and his kind of final boss fight. 
of the major skill. You um you were talking with uh, Rin about that specific dungeon and uh, making that a bit more interesting than it was in Oblivion because I, I think in Oblivion you just kind of kill him in a small room and that's that. So in Oblivion, Manamarco has to easily be the most disappointing boss fight there is in, I think, Elder Scrolls history. He is literally just some random high elf sitting in a cave who talks to you for 30 seconds and then you kill him in two hits. We're hoping that in Sky Oblivion we can make him a more interesting fight uh, without having to add new dialogue with things like a more interesting dungeon for you to fight him in mixed with maybe some more interesting mechanics involved in the fight. Yeah, that will be, uh, will be good. Also, this shot here, you may recognize from the trailer. I'm, I'm trying my best to recreate it, but uh, unlike our video editor, um, I may not have the best eye for uh, for details like this. Uh, but it was the, the guy in the Dwemer armor basically walking past as well. I actually, I quite like this area because we're... Uh, Heading into the Fall Forest, which is a very colorful, autumn-like uh, area in the game. And behind us we have still a piece of the Heartlands, which is mostly filled with pine trees. And I just think the, the contrast between the two areas works really well. And it's almost literally divided by the road here. And definitely one of my, uh, my top three locations in the game right now. I'm seeing a lot of questions about DLC as well. Uh, on initial release, it'll have none of the DLC included with the intention to work on them once we've got the base game finished. A, f a funny... well, funny. When when starting the Oblivion project in some of the first videos, you may uh, um, see me in the comments promising to do uh, basically base Oblivion and all the DLC for the first release. And the truth is that when we started the Skyblivion project, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I kind of figured it out as we went and completely underestimated the amount of work because initially what we thought we would do is we would um, we would port with, with like automated tools the entire game. So there would be no manual adjusting, no manual labor, nothing. Uh, and that turned out to be a lot more difficult than we thought. We also were visited by someone from Bethesda at the time who said, uh, we love what you guys are doing, but if you're going to make a mod, uh, you're going to have to remake all the assets because we can't allow you to uh, to just use the assets from... Uh... Oh, damn, that was cool. You can't just use the assets from Oblivion and port them from one game to the other. So um, any... That was some... That was the spider data, by the way, that you saw for a split second. It's a bit of a shame that they killed the wolf so fast, but... But yeah, moral of the story is, uh... Don't underestimate making a triple-A game that took a full-time team of developers five years to make, with quite a large budget, if you're planning on doing it in your free time, with volunteers, most of which who are uh, hobbyists and amateurs, um, because it might not go as fast as you think it might. Uh, I keep seeing questions pop up about the leveling system. So currently we're going more with a Skyrim-like leveling system for the most part. Uh, we don't have any of the skills from Oblivion that weren't in Skyrim reappearing at the moment. Uh, something that I think we're willing to look into, but currently not anything also the um the armor i'm wearing right now is the uh, the mithril armor set one thing i really like about uh, elder scrolls games is that uh you have the freedom to do anything and go anywhere and for me that usually means going off the beaten path you know how in oblivion they always say you know by the nine divines if you're if you're got to travel stay on the road I love to uh, go off-roading, and that's what we're doing right now. And one of the things we really try to encourage people to do in Sky Oblivion is to explore. Um, Oblivion, fantastic game, my favorite game of all time. But the exploration in the overworld is pretty disappointing because there's not a whole lot of things for you to find. 
So here, I will admit, this is a little bit scripted because I, I chose this location for a reason. We have some interesting bits that this is not connected to any quest or anything like that. It's just, it's just here. So I'm going to choose to avoid this troll because he looks a bit angry. And if I don't hurt him, hopefully he won't hurt me. We're gonna have yeah, also. Uh, I saw. Yeah, sorry. I saw a question about the uh, ambient events and you know, random act, random stuff happening. We're gonna have the same as Skyrim, basically. Uh, guards going on the roads, prisoner transportations, bandit encounters. So you'll uh, you'll notice when Rebel was uh, picking the mushroom just then. Um, in Oblivion, what would happen is you'd harvest the mushroom that give you a chance of success. Um, part, partly to line with Skyrim, and partly because I think it makes sense. Um, when you pick a mushroom, you get a mushroom. Um, so just one of the examples of how we might need to <laughs> rescale things in alchemy. So there's a lot, lots to think about, even with something as simple as a mushroom. I'm sorry, I killed one of the Spriggans. Kind of run into uh, a Spriggan den. Feel a bit bad. Look really cool though. So this is the, the location we just saw is kind of similar to Skyrim's glades. In Skyrim you have a bunch of glades where you'll find uh, Spriggans having found refuge and just sort of like tending the area. Uh, it's like that as well, only the locations are unmarked, so you either find it or you don't. Um, very similar to the scene here, which you will also recognize from the trailer, which is seemingly four friendly fire Atronax, who by the looks of it weren't always flamey beasts from uh, the Plains of Oblivion. A nice little book. Seen uh, some questions regarding updating the, um, the graphics engine. So we made no changes to the graphics engine. Uh, what you're seeing is um, just our tweaks to the to the lighting. Yeah, people often ask if we're using an EMB for Sky Oblivion, um, and I'm happy to say that the the Skyrim engine can do a lot more than people give it credit for. Um, I think Skyrim being grey is a stylistic choice because it's supposed to take place in Skyrim, which is a, a more cold and reserved part of um, of of. Uh, of the Elder Scrolls universe, um, and maybe they wanted to sort of do something different than Oblivion. Like, Oblivion is very colorful, so maybe that's why Skyrim is less colorful. But we were very lucky to find uh, a talented uh, lighting artist who made this. Who made uh, all the colors pop and made the overworld this pretty without doing any, uh, any post-processing. Which uh, I think we're all very, very satisfied with, and very happy with. I, th I think it's much the same with the uh, the armor. So I, th I definitely think it was a stylistic choice of Skyrim to have lots of the. If you think of the steel, of the iron armor, it's very matte. Um, whereas we've tried to make it a bit more sheeny. So um, Cyrodiil, I'd, I'd say Cyrodiil is a lot more high fant fantasy. Uh, Fishby might not let me say this much more sort of high fantasy, maybe, than Skyrim. Yeah, for sure, and I think that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much, because when you're playing Oblivion, you know, everything is warm and colorful and perfect. And here, you know, in the in the real world, it, it's not always so. Um, so it's nice to be able to, uh, to go to a place where everything is always... Always nice if you find uh, the right places. I've seen some requests to show off some of the female variants of the armor. I'm not going to ask Isle to do that in case it messes up the, uh, the run. 
Um, yes. But there is a, um, a massive amount of effort into just putting one armor set into the game. You need to um, weight paint the different, um, all the different parts of the armor to the body, and you need to do it for the male and female version. And then there's a scaling. Um, System. Don't forget the uh, the beast races. Oh, and and the beast races, which is can be quite difficult for helmets. Um, lots of the time in uh, Skyrim, you'll note that the beast race helmets are sort of just very deformed versions of the um, uh, of the sort of human or merman helmets. So we've um, it's, it's like a little bit of a puzzle to try and find out how you can get the best looking helmet without having to include an entirely new texture map, for example. Yeah. Um, I would love I would love to show you um, some of the, the different uh, variations of the armor set for uh, male and female beast races, etc. We actually have a, a bug in the game right now that keeps me from creating a custom character. We're using the default Skyrim Nord, which is why he looks doughy. <laughs> um, but it's it's an issue that we know how to fix, and we'll we'll definitely fix it with the next merge uh, internal, uh, the the next internal update. Uh, for now, we're we're stuck with Nord O One. Um, I I can say though that at least for the, the the female armor, we we try to use more or less the exact same design. Um, so just pinch your eyes and pretend I'm a, I'm a woman and I think you're you're around like 75% of the way there. Please never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I saw a question, sort of what software do we use to make 3D assets? And I think the, the answer to that is everything under the sun. So I'm a big, um, I like my open source. So I'm a big Blender user, uh, GIMP, Paint.net. Um, but the people on the team release 3ds Max, my uh, uh, sort of a big mish mishmash of um, sort of everything is probably the answer to that question. Uh, but then it feeds in through um, through NIFScope. However, we get that in there. So that is the program used to interact with NIFs, which are the file that all assets are stored into. So it tells the textures where to go on the model and sorting out how it will work with other things, which is what we generally call collision. I got a request from someone asking if I could show off the uh, the Dark Brotherhood armor, so... Well, I, I believe what we're using is a variant on Sky UI, just to answer a question. Uh, shrouded armor, sorry. I do love the view from this place. Yeah, it's beautiful. As much as I love That's... it though, I feel like visiting someplace wicked. Like Vermina Shrine. It seems like a, a nice place to go at this time of the day. I see a question about uh, crafting. We do have the intention to implement the crafting system from Skyrim to some extent. And we've got uh, one of the developers, Ludist, has worked on quite a lot of crafting recipes for you to find in the world. So a question on um, on will there be followers? I think Scott, you might be well placed to answer that one. So, for the most part, there were wow. followers in yeah, Oblivion. The they were few and far between. Um, usually, they were reserved for the end of quest lines. Um, so we will have them uh, in the game, but they will be a lot harder to get than Skyrim. And just the way that Oblivion was written, unfortunately. They don't have a lot of character to them. They're just going to be uh, Dark Brotherhood, Assassins, and Mages Guild Apprentices without names. But they will exist, and they will be using Skyrim's better follower system. So you can access their inventory. You can tell them to go there and pick up this thing. So it will be an improvement over Oblivion's clunky, to say the least, followers. 
and it's it's de definitely Just something. So we're, we're very aware of uh, scope creep. So our main aim is to get what was in Oblivion refreshed all all in the same way, and into um, into as a Skyrim mod. But it's it's an area that is absolutely ripe for either um, anyone on the team or anyone else in the modern community to come afterwards and add in their own followers. Yeah, I think that that's one of the main things. Like the the name of the game for us right now is honestly, you know, to to focus on the MVP. Uh, the MVP for us is the the minimal viable product. So that means the version of Skyblavy that we are comfortable with releasing. Um, I think there is a hundred things we would like to do different, uh, that we'd like to add, that we'd like to change. But at the end of the day, you know, we can't keep working on this forever. At some point, you gotta say it's done. And that's really what we're working towards now. We're, we're working towards wrapping up all the product projects that we have going on internally. Um, projects can be uh, 3D artists working on city architecture, both internal or like um, interior and exterior, um, so that the level designers can uh, finish making uh, whatever locations are connected to that. Um, for the quest guys to to wrap up quests and uh, allow us to start testing them and trying to break them. Um, at some point, it's uh, it's it's time to uh, to focus on those things, and that's really what we're uh, what we're doing now. So I saw there was a question about how the installation process and or download will work um, for for where you're gonna download or and where you host it. We that's to be discussed. But uh, if you know how Tales of Two Wastelands works, it's basically the same. For us, um, it's gonna be a, a installer. You download it. You will go through the process. Choose your Oblivion installation source and your Skyrim installation, and it will just go through it as a regular game installation, essentially. I've seen a couple questions pop up about uh, seeing Chaden Hall. I think, and and few people asking why they haven't seen Chaden Hall before in gameplay. I think the honest answer to that is that it's not very far along in development compared to the other cities. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. On yeah, that file. yeah. Oh, we're we're, um, we're we're kind of going there now. Um, we also seem to be having a, an issue with loading textures, which is again one of the reasons why there's a a 2025 date stamped on the trailer and not uh, tomorrow. Uh, which mo most likely has to do with a lot of the textures that we have in the game being quite high resolution to the point where it's probably a bit too high. Yeah, um, well, we're going to have to go over it. Yeah, and that, that that's a great thing to, uh, to do in the final stage of development where you start lo looking over everything you have and seeing what needs to be changed, improved, added. Um, and this is definitely one of the areas that uh, needs to improve. This is actually one of the areas I'm working on uh, starting this year. Uh, so we'll be adding a lot more uh, a lot more detail to this soon, which actually will be streamed for quite a bit, um, as per usual, um, which is a good segue into letting you know that there's a good couple of people on the Skyblivian team who stream development on Twitch. Uh, if you go to Twitch, uh, you will find um, a stream team called The Adventurers, which is where all of our developers are uh, residing, myself included. Also, shout out to people on Twitch. Thanks for always supporting us. Um, it's always very much appreciated. So here we have uh, Chaden Hall in its current state. Um, it's been worked on by Dikis, then it's been worked on by Caro, and currently it's being worked on by myself. Um, it's, um, it's, I would say it's, it's fairly far along. The, the biggest change we still have to make is the castle courtyard, so this area is going to be, uh, changed up to allow for carts to go into the castle, and there will be a big training ground for the guards in this spot. Um, one of the, the very cool designs from Dikis was to actually move the cathedral to be dead center in the middle. So when you come in through the city, you have a very nice view of the, uh, the beautiful cathedral in the, in the distance, which I quite like.
The, um, the, the architecture is currently being worked on by one of the new members of the team, actually. Um, so what we have, the, the way we work in Skyblivian is a bit odd and <laughs> unique. Um, for a lot of the 3D assets, we actually use the Oblivion models. So we convert the Oblivion models and then we use them as placeholders until we can recreate them. Which allows us to continue working without having to wait for new models to be made. Uh, it's an effective way for us to not waste time. Um, because otherwise, you know, you'd be here waiting for uh, for quite a while, I'm afraid. So when we will make a new model to replace the placeholder, which would be the Oblivion model, we'll make something that takes up the same world space, but is a different asset. Yeah, someone says the city looks great, but the roads at the city look medium. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that now. Like I said, the, the city is still in development, so... There will be a lot more detailing and polishing uh, on this. Having said that though, people always ask if we can show the uh, Dark Brotherhood Sanctum. Um, which we actually plan on doing today with Dekeys, who is one of the lead level designers and the person who worked on the Sanctuary. Unfortunately, Dekeys is uh, sick. He, uh, he got sick today of all days. Um, but I will do my best regardless to show off his work. Um, spoiler alert, I don't know the place inside and out, like he does, so bear with me as I stumble through the dark. So I've seen a lot of requests for us going to specific locations. Uh, we'll see if we have time for that today, because we already have a schedule, as it were. Sorry, question. Uh, yes, you will need to own both Skyrim and Oblivion to play the model. First thing um, you may notice, <laughs> we're not we're not very wanted. Um, problem is, we are currently not part of the Dark Brotherhood, so uh, in, normally in the game you're not able to get to this location. We have used console commands to cheat our way in, um, so I need to s stay clear from the NPCs, otherwise they will kick me out. Um, but that's uh, actually what am I doing? This is uh, the room with the uh, the ominous door and the statue of Sithis. Which you also saw in the trailer. Here in the trailer you were welcomed by the Dark Brotherhood into their family. But like I said, uh, we are not invited. We are breaking in. Um, We saw they put the most important item right in the middle of the uh, sanctuary there, which is the Need carpet. Need to practice more. Welcome, welcome to the family. I'd hug you, but Ochiva told me not to. There's just no accounting for it. Sad, really. It's uh, worth mentioning. You said before about uh, the Dark Brotherhood not being very welcoming at the moment because you've consoled into the cell uh, at the moment in the build as a side effect of uh, transitioning from oblivion's disposition system with the spinning wheel all of the npcs start with a disposition of zero so most npcs will talk to you like they absolutely hate you i just i just love it from a role-playing perspective <laughs> that just everyone in the world just starts up hating you <laughs> It is fun because you hear a lot of dialogue that you never know exists in Oblivion because it's hard. It's hard to get NPCs to dislike you this much in Oblivion. Like Argonians will just aggressively hiss at you. Um, someone had a good question about the orc being white. Uh, I'm currently missing what is called phase generation. So, uh, he essentially has a bug where his face shows up in a different color than it should be until I have his face data in the game. Um, so, sharp eye, uh, but it's not really anything to worry about. Having said that, um, 
the city is very work in progress. Um, we've we've showed you a taste, and I hope you will stick around, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and check out our uh, dev diaries because that is where we will show uh, the final results um, in the near future. Uh, but for now. I will take us to the next location. Fun fact, actually, this mage character is also using a model from Oblivion, which uh, Cynthia, who is one of our main uh, statue artists, has started working on, and it looks magnificent. I'm really looking forward to seeing that, uh, that statue finish properly now. Right, our next location will actually be Pell's Gate, near the Heartlands. In the Heartlands, actually. And here we have more lovely artwork. It uh, the, the artwork itself was made by Furion, who has done artwork for uh, other projects as well. And like I mentioned earlier, it was implemented by Doiksong, who is here with us today. I spent an awful lot of time <laughs> taking these artworks and putting them all into squares. I think it took, might have taken years of my life. <laughs> but def definitely how, worth it. Definitely yeah, worth I was going to say, how worth it though? Oh, was 100% it? 100 worth it. I, I did ever think of something we could show off, Kyle, which I don't think we show off much on screen. And that, that might be, um, if there's a good opportunity to maybe go through some of the general inventory cl um, clutter assets. So mugs, mugs and plates and um, forks <laughs> and stuff that's generally not, not maybe flashy. <laughs> not I I I hate to break, but I don't have any clutter on me. But we'll um we're we're gonna be visiting Leywin later as well, which does have a good bit of clutter uh, in and around some of the locations. Brilliant and uh, uh, fair warning to uh, to the chat. Uh, there might be some stuff which uh, jumps and jiggles around while we sort out the collision, so we've primarily focused on getting the new assets into the game and then when we're happy with how it's all interacting uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few things which we need to fix they're down on our bug tracker uh, the, seen... the map will be replaced with a paper map sorry, it's gone That's yes, the map will be replaced with a paper map like Oblivion, yes I've seen a couple questions about the uh, Painted World quest. I believe the quest is for the most part uh, done and implemented, but we don't have the assets or the world space finished at this point. So anything we have to show you wouldn't look particularly nicer than what you experience in Oblivion. Just a pretty pretty lighting. Uh, got a question about the Grand Champion armor. Do you have that, Carl? I do, yeah. <laughs> That's too bad. They just spawned a deer. Yeah, so <laughs> it's the, um, what's it called? Daedric Deer, confirmed. Skull of Corruption. <laughs> um, it's supposed to create an identical clone of the target, which attacks them, but I guess maybe it doesn't work. On, on wolves? I've seen it work in other creatures, actually. Golden Brand will do just fine, I think. Do you have a uh, Horomi's Ice Staff on hand, Kyle? Uh, That's something I worked on that I'm quite proud of and I had it to the moment in the trailer. I do, actually. It was shown off in the trailer, yeah. There we go. Look how shiny and sparkly it is. Beautiful ice effect. So this was all made in Blender. So you don't need any of this software. What, uh, what might be good to mention is that there's currently a lack of um, NPC AI 
Or at least the AI packages are there, like the wolf has its AI packages, but because of a lack of nav mesh, uh, it can't attack us at the moment. It wants to, believe it or not, it wants to uh, rip our throats out, uh, but because there's no navigational mesh which tells him where he can and cannot go, he kind of stands in his place until you get right up to him, uh, which is the only chance he'll get to actually doing damage to you. Um, so write that down as, I guess, a, a bug in the game currently, uh, but also something that uh, will be fixed once our uh, wonderful nav meshing team uh, gets around to, uh, to putting the nav mesh um, down for the area. I see a question about weapon and armor meshes, and uh, how how many of them are done. I believe we, we've um, got... I, I, Sorry to interrupt. I think we need to, to put a pin in that, uh, because there's someone here in the end that I really, really want to talk to. Yeah. It's the, uh, the weird cat lady standing on the chair. She must have something important to say if, uh, if she's standing upright like that. Can you help me find my lost jumbo potatoes? See, my 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 Elder Scroll senses were tingling, and I was right. This lady needs help, and who else but the hero of Kavach to help her out with jumbo potatoes? Please, these potatoes gave me so much bother I because I kept doing them wrong, and they kept crashing the game. I don't know what I'll do. But they're now finally fixed, so All now I can I sleep. To do was give them some sun. Next thing I knew, they were gone. I saw someone running off to the west, but I'm too frightened to journey into the woods alone. Please, can you help me? I'll pay you well, I swear. Okay. Well, no, uh, no hero would uh, decline a sweet old cat lady. To help find her jumbo potatoes, especially if there's gold involved. And apparently all we have to do is go west to find the person who ran away with her prized potatoes. It should be right this way. I think we found the culprit. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> uh, no, I wanted to. Okay, we we gotta we gotta do this again. I wanted to actually show off the ogre, but the the fire atronet or the the frost atronet, that boy moved fast. I don't think I'll be able to play this quest because I, I really empathize with the ogre. He, he saw big potatoes and he took them. Yeah, he wants you to want to keep them. Well, a hero's got to do what a hero's got to do, you know? If it has big teeth and looks like a monster, you need to treat it like a monster. But yeah, the um, someone said uh, the nav mesh does look like a lot of work. It is. It is. It's quite a big uh, a big task uh, for us to complete. Um, Mainly because the nav meshing team is unable to do any work until areas are completely finished. So this area has been finished, and the nav mesh has been started on the region. Um, but most of the focus currently has been on uh, Blackwood and areas of the map that have been finished uh, a longer while ago. The, um, the ogre was actually made by a mother by the name of Fourth Unknown. Um, we were making our own, actually, um, but he made an ogre that looked 
just as good, if not better. Um, we asked if we could use him, and he was kind enough to say yes. Um, you'll see a couple of his creatures actually in the game uh, when you get to play it in 2025. All right, let's um, let's talk to this lady about her potatoes. You have them. You have them. I can sense they're with you. Oh my goodness, you found them. Oh, I could kiss you. As promised. <laughs> I love her I face expression. <laughs> reward for your efforts. I present you with my first batch of famous potato bread, more valuable than gold. Enjoy. Safe journey to you. I think this may be why in Elder Scrolls games we have a distrust for Khajiit because when they tell you that they will reward you handsomely, they end up giving you potato bread. Had we I, known I that from the start? I would be if someone gave me potato bread in real life. <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, the so difference between you and I. Much more valuable than money. Ugh. I have a, I have an expensive hobby, you know. I need to collect all the uh, the unique weapons from the shops in Oblivion, that cost like ten to fifty thousand gold sometimes. An expensive hobby. I can't. I can't pay them in potato bread. You know, I gotta pay them in uh, clinky coin. If time allows, could you check out the Cloud Ruler Temple as well as the area around the new windmill in the Imperial City? Um, if time allows, yeah. If um, if people stick around and we see that. Uh, Stopping the stream would be a, a crime. We'll uh, keep going for as long as we can. I'll try to show off some of the areas you've requested. Yeah. Um, uh, Dive Rock was one of the most requested, also. Yeah, I saw Dive Rock popping up a couple of times. Yeah. It's yeah. it's in a bit. It it's not quite finished. I don't think. No, I, I guess the view is what they're requesting. Yeah, the view, the view, the view is there. The view is there. The view sure. is there. <laughs> I think there's a good question as well to you that. Uh, why are the mountains so tall? Uh, Reason they might want to talk a bit on the elevation, sort of how the maps transferred over. Uh, the mountains in distance? Uh, in, in the distance and where we're standing right now. Uh, so we have both the Gerald Mountains and the Valos Mountains. Um, so the Valos Mountain in Oblivion was really not... Well, there wasn't really anything there, to be honest. And so we have actually, well, improved on the area. We added a bit of a mid-transition to the area, so there's like not a sharp uh, edge between the between Shaden Hall and up to the mountain with snow. So there's like a sh nice, clean transition. And it, it is, I think, the same Z level as Oblivion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Roughly, the... yeah. The, the difference is just in the the newer Skyrim engine. Yeah. It just seems like you're a lot higher. Yeah. Um, yeah, the map should adhere to the same uh, size as Oblivion in height and everything. On top of that, um, in, in Oblivion, there were no mountain meshes. So the mountains too. you saw in the distance were basically hills with boulders every once in a while. Um, and because, you know, Skyrim has proper mountains, we're able to make the mountains look higher and more rocky. More impressive. Talking about, uh, you, you mentioned random events. I'm not sure if this counts as a random event, but this is something that I quite like. It's a bit of a an easter egg, if you will. Temple of Doom, anyone? Indiana Jones. <laughs> and now for the reward. One golden nugget. Nice. Poor guy. Here we can see the city of Breville in the distance. For a question, uh, 
question there, which I think is always going to be one of my favourite questions, which was, uh, have you heard of the High Elves? And that <laughs> just um, made me think of the um, awesome, funny, random encounters. Yep. It makes me it's think actually... of the Lafayros. Oh, I, th I think that is them. I think I think that's not even from Oblivion. Nope. But, um... So that's the fun thing is that it, that 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 line became quite a meme in the Elder Scrolls and Oblivion community, but the line doesn't exist in the game, actually. It's made up. I think our, our favorite ones are probably "I love dogs," doesn't everyone? And um, the guy who walks around town telling people that he doesn't want to know them. I think might be the, uh, definitely my idol there. We, we've arrived at the city of Breville, by the way. Um, which you may recognize from our uh, dev diary. We did a, a dev diary where we showed off the city of Breville. And because of that, I'm going to recommend you check out the video if you want to see what it looks like on the inside. Um, and in the meantime, take you elsewhere. Also, here is the the new carriage system we have in the game. Obviously using Skyrim, um, which is a little bit broken, but you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah, you um, need to turn that guy around. And I actually want to take you to Fathis Aaron's tower. Oh, and this has to be my favorite load screen in the game. Perfect. Uh, but yes, you can use carriage carriages now to go travel between the larger cities. Proper shootout. Oblivion will have uh, full controller support. I do all of my testing on controller. This is actually um, a quest location in the game that I quite like because it's one of the few forts that is more or less a tower. Because this one is actually called Fathis Aris's Tower and not Fathis Aris's Fort. And the fort is not a tower. And I will die that on that hill. True. <laughs> so, a very good question. Are there any voice lines for carriage drivers? And I will say, uh, yes. what, what we did was we went we through all of the uh, dialogue lists. <laughs> yeah, so we basically spliced uh, Oblivion voice lines. And I, I think there were some fun, happy ones that I suggested. But I'm yeah. not sure if they've yeah. ended up in the final product. Yeah, they did, they did. Uh, so, Doug helped me. I've uh, just going through the long list of voice lines in this game. So, we. Picked out the quite few, so you have like nice quirky lines from them when they start driving. Like, have you ever been to Broom? I hear it's pretty cold and, you know, stuff like that. Talking about Bruma, we're not gonna go there. Uh, we're gonna go someplace else. We are gonna go to Water's Edge. More lovely artwork. That is beautiful. Yeah, I do really love the uh, the load of screens we got. This is, by the way, the settlement that you saw in the trailer, but most of you probably won't recognize it because in the trailer it's on fire. Um, and that is because, um, I don't want to spoil the exact events that happen here, because I'm sure not everyone has played it. But at some point in Oblivion, you will go here for a quest. Um, and the town will be under siege. On, it, it will be attacked by ominous men in dark, cladded armor. I think some of you will uh, will know what I'm talking about. Those who played Oblivion. Another interesting thing is that uh, something that Skyrim had, which I quite liked, is that Skyrim had border gates. So 
close to the border of a different region, such as uh, Cyrodiil, where we're in now, Skyrim would put down a gate which walled off the uh, the province you were in currently with the other province, which you obviously cannot travel to. Um, and we like that idea so much that we've done something very similar. So beyond this gate, actually, is the mysterious land of elsewhere, of the Khajiiti cat people. Um, which is a warmer climate. Uh, it has lovely oases and deserts. Pine forests. And you can get basically a taste of it through the metal bars, because this is as, as far as we can go. It does look very inviting though, I will say. Uh, that's definitely one of my favorite memories of playing Skyrim back in 2011, which is going down south and everything starts um, being less snowy and more uh, cyrodiilic. That was very cool. Yeah. And I can imagine for people playing through this area of the game, so in front of us is Blackwood, which is the marsh of Cyrodiil. Um, the area we're going to be running through right now, it's pretty mellow compared to uh, further into the uh, the swamps. This this area I would I would still consider to be quite nice looking, but it, it gets it gets very damp, it gets very dark, and it gets very rainy the further you go east. One of the upsides, though, of Blackwoods is the city of Leowin, which in lore is a very important trade city, actually, because it is situated on the uh, river that leads into Cyrodiil and eventually into the Imperial, uh, in, into the Imperial city. So for trading, it's a very, very important location. Uh, and because of that, we have rebuilt it. Um, ironically, it, the, the new Leowin that we made is based off of concept art by the concept artist for Oblivion itself. Um, I assume due to time constraints or hardware limitations of the time, they were not able to make the city the way they envisioned it. Um, but that's a perfect excuse for us to try and make it a reality. Um, as you can see, currently we don't have distant LOD for the city, so it kind of pops in as you get close. That's one of the things we have to uh, generate uh, when time comes. Uh, for now, it doesn't look too pretty, but it it just works. So at least we have that. Also, our uh, bug fixing team will have a good time putting these back into the ground where they belong. That their magic flying mushroom sky all them, it's good like that. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's not a bug, it's a feature. I forgot. It's fantasy, fantasy world. That's on me. <laughs> uh, I think we have a, had an ask. Uh, do you send me a message saying uh, someone's asked for the Trudgeon of Submission car? Oh, I do quite like that weapon. This is a, a unique model made by Shadow. Uh, concept by Geese. And uh, to be honest, I, I wouldn't want to get hit by one of these, I'll say. I'm so, uh, not sure what, what's worse, uh, the pain or the humiliation of getting hit by one of these. Either way, it's not good. The question, will, will mm. this have bots? To assist me. Um, I'm so even, even though can this I uh, can I interrupt you real quick because yep, we're uh, about to start a another little side quest, uh, so we can maybe listen to the dude who needs huh, stuff and things. Yourself. A small group of skooma dealers led by a dunmer named Kylie Sonavo is holed up in the Grayland settlement just up the road. I've been trying to catch Lenavo for months, but every time I approach the place, his lookout sees me, and he goes running. I need someone to go in there and put a stop to those fetchers. I don't care what it takes. We must get that poison they're selling off the street. 
Bring me Lenavo's ring as proof he's been dealt with, and I'll give you the bounty on him. Be vigilant. Lenavo is a snake. Understood. So we uh, we just got a quest. Another quest. This time to uh, to do the city of Leowin a favor and clean up a, uh, a, gra a gang of drug dealers who uh, have a hideout near the city. According to him, it's up the road. And I wonder if that could be it. I, th I think I'm right in saying that that armor is currently a placeholder. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, an armor set from Nexus, um, which we have been given. Um, but the 3D artist Roy, who has done the Dagon model and also the Imperial Palace Guard, wanted to tackle the uh, the regular Legion armor set too. So in the end, uh, his version will be uh, put into the game. We've actually arrived at the, um, well, house. Doesn't look uh, too invited, but we do know that there's, um, I don't know, drug dealers, bandits, someone in there who uh, who might want to hurt us the moment we step foot into their building. So I think we need to play this uh, play this smart. I think we should go in nice and quiet. Don't make too much noise. <laughs> oh, I love this weapon so much. <laughs> uh, well, that's now mine, as is your ring. Thank you. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I was I was looking for an excuse to use this one. <laughs> yes, this is the um, the maze Volendrung. Um, it's a unique. Dwarven Mace, um, look it up on UESP, the, the lore for this is fantastic. It, it apparently is the hammer that fell. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have all these cool new enchantments for Daedric artifacts, and one of them is for Volendrung, which, if you use it, will literally make the ground shake and tremble. But only if you stand still by and using a power attack. If you do a moving power attack, it'll be a regular hammer. I mean, it'll be a powerful hammer, but it won't do this. Oh, I mean, this. But yeah, I think I think that's one of the the coolest additions we made in in the last year. Um, people sometimes ask. Uh, what your favorite part is of Skyblavian. I think it changes every year, but last year my favorite part of the project was uh, the Daedric artifacts getting all their cool magic effects that we have in the game now. Like that was... I I honestly, I, I would I would not have thought of some of the um, the unique enchantments that Heir of Septims came up with. He is a genius. And talking about genius, we actually had our first crash. Um, thanks, Todd. Intermission time. Question time. Time to to like like the stream, like the the trailer. Check it out if you haven't yet. But most importantly, ask your questions because we have to relaunch the game anyway. Uh, so a question a few minutes ago regarding mods. So to, to clarify, Sky Oblivion is a mod for Skyrim. You'll need to own Oblivion and Skyrim. And on top of that, people or us in the future can make yet more mods. And so that's where we'd envisage, envisage uh, maybe potential further followers or marriage or player homes. So what our main MVP as Rebel says, is to sort of get the Oblivion game and Skyrimify it. And then any sort of added stuff on then, uh, we're leaving open.
It's maybe actually good that we crashed because I forgot to hand in our quest. I, I got distracted by the beautiful city of Leowin and uh, thought I would just walk right in. <laughs> uh. I see a question about uh, goblins, specifically the mechanics such as like clans and the goblin wars that were in Oblivion. Uh, so we have gone above and beyond to distinguish the different goblin clans from each other. It's way more visually noticeable than it was in Oblivion. So the and I'm Blade? actually the one working on the goblin wars at the moment. So if you take a goblin's shaman staff from one tribe and leave the shaman alive, they will go out of their way to reclaim it from wherever you leave it. That's cool. Alright, let's talk to this dude. I forgot to enable quest markers, but uh, so I kind of know this one by heart. Graylin? Any luck taking down Lenavo? You've done it! I can't even begin to thank you enough. By the divines, I salute you in the name of the Legion. <laughs> Here is your well-earned reward. All right. Let's see if we can get into the city this time around without crashing. If it does crash again, um, I think it may be one of the packages I installed just before the stream, which is probably exactly why I shouldn't be making changes uh, when I already tested the game and it worked fine before. If it does work, I'll take a look at the crash log and see why we crashed earlier. Hey, it works. So now we have to figure out why there was a crash that is not reproducible this time around. Yeah, I will take a look at it after. Yeah. Again, one of the reasons why we put a 2025 release here on uh, on the mods, so we can figure stuff like this out. Having said that, we have arrived in the city of Leowin, uh, currently in the upper class district. Uh, you saw this in the trailer. Um, something you don't see that was in the trailer was a lot of people walking around. That's because, again, there currently is no nav mesh in this build, which means that people are in their homes and they uh, they kind of don't know how to get out. Um, as far as they know, they've been imprisoned into a plane of oblivion itself and they're just sitting there watching time go by. Um, so we'll, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll leave them to it and I'll just focus on showing off uh, the new redesigned city. Uh, what I talked about earlier is the redesign uh, based on the Oblivion concepts, which had these passageways for ships to go in and out of the city, um, which would allow them to uh, deliver goods, uh, take new goods with them into the Imperial City, or even go out of uh, the land of Cyrodiil to borders beyond, like, I don't know, Hammer? Uh, High Rock, sorry, Hammerfell? You name it. In the middle of the city, we have the Temple District, which houses, well, the Cathedral and the uh, the castle. I originally wanted to show you the castle because we started working on the interiors, um, but I was unable to get the interior files um, into the latest build of the game on time. Um, so we'll just save that for another developer diary or a different showcase in the future. Um, I think Dikis has been working on it on stream a little bit. Um, so for those watching on Twitch right now, uh, feel free to look at the adventurous streaming team, find Dikis, and I'm sure that if you watch his latest video or uh, his latest stream archive, uh, you can see a little bit what the, uh, the castles will look like, uh, in the near future. I actually never took the route here. I didn't know there was a gate. Wow. Question on uh, new quests, and I, b I believe we're just sticking to the initial Oblivion quests, but I think that's still a very healthy number. Oh yeah. I, I to be honest... How many are there? Uh, in Oblivion, I believe, off the top of my head, the number is around 220. Um, and that's worth mentioning that things like the arena are contained entirely within one quest. So 
even though there's 220 quests, uh, one developer is working entirely on the arena quest line, and technically that is only one quest, but it's taking as long as 15, 20 side quests would. We are, um... Said... Sorry, Scott, go ahead. I was just going to say, having said that, uh, I feel like every week we're making more and more progress in the quest department, and things are looking good, and we're progressing quickly, and hopefully we will have uh, well over... Well, no, we do have well over half the quests in a playable state currently. Yeah, which is, to be honest, a major milestone. Because I, I remember... I don't know, the last five years, my main concern being that quests were just not going to go anywhere because they didn't seem to be going anywhere. And all of a sudden, you know, we're, uh, we're shooting off. Um, something to, to mention quickly, we're in the lower class district. There's issues with these doors because they've been replaced. Uh, because of that, they uh, don't look that nice. Um, but uh, it will be fixed. Also, something that I find very funny, um, looking back, is that Fishfiend and myself met each other at PAX East in 2019. At the time, you were not working on Skyblivion, you were just an Elder Scrolls fan who had made mods. Um, I think we hung out for three days, and fairly soon, after a, uh, a lovely PAX, you joined the project, and I think you've done what, like 30% of the, the quests in the game? I think uh, would be a fair so estimate. Currently, I've implemented... Um, let's say... Just under 50? Around the 50 mark of quests. So, yeah, yeah. Between a third and a quarter, somewhere around there. I need to go to, uh, to Pax East more often. It paid off, for sure. Oh, this one is so good as well. I love I, I love the artwork. I love the loading screen so much. I haven't seen this one actually, so screenshot. Um, we're actually going to go to Periite's Shrine. Um, this is one of the locations. At the beginning of the stream, I mentioned we wanted to show you the good and the bad, the finished and the unfinished. And that's an area that I think, or this is an area that I think, uh, just like it shows it off perfectly. We have. A very, very cool looking location on our hands here. Um, and we're actually going to go into the realm of Periad as well in a second, which is a unique uh, Daedric realm. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the location around it um, is not great. We have NPCs who are T-posing. Uh, that is actually by design, because these NPCs are frozen in time. It's part of the quest. Um, what's not part of the quest, though, is the location of the shrine. It's it's uh, a bug because the new quest was merged. Let me show you where the statue and the NPCs are supposed to be. Uh, or, well, where they were put by the level designer originally, and then because of a small uh, merging compatibility issue, they were put somewhere else. So here is where you would see the statue normally, and the cultists would be standing in a circle, frozen in time, because they were performing a ritual uh, before they got uh, they got frozen like that. Uh, but it's a bit hard to, to get that when they are floating in the air down there instead. I will say the area looks really cool, and the reason why it looks the way it does is because this is supposed to be a representation of Periite's realm in Oblivion. Well, our interpretation of the realm, um, which I will showcase in a minute. Uh, but I, again, want to take a bit of time to show you that as good as Skyblivian is in its current state, there's still a lot of this present as well. Areas that have not been touched properly and are empty voids. Oh, a good question. What are the red lines? So the red lines and the blue lines are actually... Um, dividers, uh, you could say. They they show where uh, certain claims start and end. Um, so one landscape, one level designer will be working on this side of the map, while the other will work on the opposite side. And they will leave a gap of, I would say, the size of twice this river. Um, so that when they're both done with their work, 
one of them can stitch two areas together and voila we can uh, we can call it finished and move on to the next area but yeah like I say this is this is all heavy work in progress like this is uh, not good <laughs> but again I, I don't want to I don't want to hide anything. Uh, there are areas like this in the game, so there you go. The blue lines are lines for the future dirt paths, and the red lines are the border regions. Gotcha. And I knew that just off the top of my head. I, I just knew that. I, I had a feeling because they were very <laughs> thin and wiggly, no, to be DC's honest. No, just sent me a message. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I got that. Um, as cool as this is, though, one thing that will be cooler than Periite Shrine might be Periite's own realm. I wrote down the COC command for this and I can't find it in my notes. Uh, Periite realm 1615. Looking forward to playing this. This is sick. Much appreciated. Thanks for the uh, kind words and hey Shadow. Um, this is a bit of a premiere. I don't think we've shown this off. Uh, so <laughs> I hope you feel blessed because uh, this is a pretty damn amazing uh, location in the game, or at least it's it turned into one. Originally in the Oblivion, this realm was just like any other Oblivion gate. It was red with lava and rocks and a statue somewhere in the middle. Uh, and we had fantastic concept art by Roman Dabina, which was then put into the game by the Ludist, who has worked on a few um, cool areas in the game so far. And um, yeah, this is uh, this is the result. The cool thing about this realm is that it was made using no unique assets. The only unique asset in the game. Are you kidding me? The only unique asset in the game is actually the uh, the statue on the on the hill here. Everything else um, was either retextured or reused from other parts of uh, of the Skyblivian game, um, which I thought I would mention because uh, obviously we want to try and make these locations look cool and interesting, uh, but we're not we're not a full time uh, developer team. We don't have you know. 23 artists standing ready at all times who want to make cool assets for this uh, this kind of thing. So we have to be a bit smart with how we uh, how we spend our time and resources. Also build size. Um, so with it, it can be very easy to make um, very high res assets, but then we need to make low poly versions so it's more efficient, and we really have to stay on top the time of our texture size. Yeah, that's a good point as well. The name of the game really is to just be smart with what we have. I think, to be honest, we did we did pretty damn well. Or well, I say we, but honestly, the the credit goes to the Ludus completely. And I think even Hinamoto made some cool concepts for it as well, now that I think of it. So this is j just Periite's realm, so this isn't how the Oblivion realm looks. That's no, not at all. That is still very full of lava. <laughs> um, what I just d disabled, by the way, this is the... Uh, the LOD for the area, um, which is a, an ugly blob because we have to generate new distant terrain for the the realm now that it's been finished. Uh, but again, these are all all kinds of things, which is exactly why we chose 2025 as a release year, because we need the time to resolve issues like this and make the necessary improvements and changes so that you can play through it properly. I'm actually taking you to a location because I want to show off a little thing that I hope the Ludist won't mind too much. 
Uh, consider this a hint for when you uh, get your hands on the game. If I can find it. It wasn't there. No, it's, it's here. Yeah, it's here for sure. How sure am I though? I think it's up there. <laughs> okay, maybe I don't know where I'm going. See, I'd not seen this yet, and I was wondering why Luke got me to take the uh, the jewels off those dragon heads. <laughs> so that makes ah, sense. I think I found it. Oops, kicked it away. Whoop. No, that's not it. Oh, I found it earlier today when I was doing a, a test run of this area. Oh, I know where it is. Yeah, okay, I remember. My brain, my brain just kicked in. Uh, just gonna leave the Dramora be for now. So after this uh, little detour, we are gonna go back to Cyrodiil. Take some more questions on um, VR. Um, so there's there's no reason, uh, not not just VR, but sort of other mods, if they're not conflicting with ours, which we don't believe they should, then they should be perfectly compatible. And we're not going out of our way to make it not. So it should be just like any other Skyrim mod. And that goes. And I, I did see a good question earlier, which was, uh, will this mod have mods? And I, th I think the answer is really, we hope so. I, uh, I'm an idiot because I already forgot what the armor set is called that I just picked up. So I wasn't Plague really paying Walker. attention. Oh, something with plague, okay. PL. Um, so this is also a good example of making something unique without making anything unique. Um, this is the mithril armor with, correct me if I'm wrong, custom cube maps. That's right, um, so he's just, um, just in the NIF, so there's no additional textures that we've used. So the way Skyrim does reflections is that it fakes it um, by pretty much, um, well, he's using a cube map. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can um, uh, simplify that more. Uh, but what this, I think this used to be a silver color. Yep. And now it was. It, instead of that, it's just adding a bronze cube map, but it makes all, all the difference in just uh, tweaking and changing parameters in the diff. Yeah, and um, this is one of seven pieces. I think there's weapons as well. So there's a full armor set and unique weapons that you can find, which all have uh, enchantments related to Periite and its realm. Um, it's a scavenge hunt, though. No quest markers, so good luck trying to find it. Uh, I think by disabling LOD, I also disabled the water, so that's not going to look too nice on the map, but okay. Um, which leads me to the next location, which is Fort Ash. In the Great Forest, which you have also seen the trailer. If you've not watched the trailer, go watch the trailer. Will the Shivering Isles be part of the release? So... We have made the very conscious decision to work on the main game uh, before doing any of the DLC because as it turns out, making Oblivion in your free time is already a lot of work without doing the Shivering Isles, which is arguably one of the best DLC, but still a lot of extra quests, extra locations, and extra work, uh, which, you know, with our current schedule is... Uh, not the best idea to add, because if we were to do the Shivering Owls together with the main game, that also means that the release will be pushed back. And I think we can all agree that we want the release to be sooner, not later. Here's another good example of uh, distant terrain that needs to be generated, because if I walk through this, everything will look as it should. Something for us to do in the uh, in the future and the the mods I saw that question pop up a few times as well the mod is obviously free you can download Skyblivian 
either from our website. We're not entirely sure yet how we're going to roll it out. Uh, but however we roll it out, you can download it for free. All you need is Skyrim and Oblivion. And you're, uh, you'll be all set. And just, just to follow on from that, um, so I've, I've seen some questions around Anniversary Edition and um, regular Special Edition Skyrim. And just to... It's sort of tied into why we had one of the old loading screens pop up earlier. It's because I'm uh, working from the uh, version which has some of the additional um, bits from Anniversary Edition that Steam's just downloaded, like the fishing mechanic, which wasn't really optional. Um, so my mod list is uh, saying, stable these things. Uh, but Kyle's doesn't, uh, Rebels doesn't have that. So it means that the um, the plugin to disable all the unloaded screens isn't working on Kyle's side. So it's something which we're working through, but not seeing it being an issue. Yeah, exactly. For all, I mean, for all intents and purposes, for regular modders, Anniversary Edition is Special Edition, essentially. Guys, bonk. All right, continue. Sorry. No, yeah, no, no, it's fine. I'm just saying that. So, <laughs> Anniversary Edition was actually only... Uh, it was basically just an upgrade to the compiler for Skyrim, and they included some stuff, so... Everyone who has Special Edition have some part of the Anniversary Edition, so that's what it will be based on in the end. Ooh, Spider Daedra. Uh, you will need both uh, Skyrim and Oblivion downloaded, yes. We're, um, I totally forgot to mention this, but we are currently in the the Great Forest. Um, I think this is becoming my, my new favorite part, like, favorite region in the game. Uh, there's something about Redwoods. I've been to the Redwoods once in my life, and... I was honestly in awe when I first saw trees that massive and that old. Um, and I think these are a pretty nice homage to those uh, to those ancient forests. Um, which leads us to actually the location where we also shot um, a clip for the trailer, which was right here. Where you see the guy on the Dwemer armor, uh, Dwemer armor riding his horse east to the Imperial City. Really, really pretty location. And I spy a camp with a doggy. Um, we've been talking a bit about bugs. I'm not sure if this bug was fixed, but I'm gonna try it. Ah! Okay, so dogs still have rumors. Do we Fun have fact, to change that? <laughs> the, uh, we don't. We don't have to. Maybe it's maybe it's a feature, because the 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 hero of Kavach apparently speaks dog. And the dogs are all very into the dark brother. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> the other important thing to know that. They're uh. And yeah, they're very in the know on current events in in, uh, in Serial. They're, they're all good boys. That's They're all good boys, boys, yes, that's true. I do like this fort a lot as well. It was um, made by Caro. Uh, later tweaked a bit by Jero. A nice team effort. We're going to go around it though, and we are going to move on to our next location, which is south. Gothel's Front Priory, if I can stop running into a tree. Actually, west, not south. <clears throat> Change the text to good boy. <laughs> Did we show the sanctuary? Yes, we have shown the, the sanctuary um around the one hour mark i think 45 minutes maybe I, I love locations like these as well you know you have like a little priory small farm and then just this beautiful forest
You need to hire someone that makes an animation to pet the dog. Well, the good thing about working in Skyrim is that um, mods should work. And I know for a fact that there's a mod that allows you to pet dogs in Skyrim. Because uh, I'm using that one as well. So, as luck has it, we don't need to hire anyone, and you can just install that mod and use it for Skyblivion too. Sorry, I, I sometimes see requests for uh, for armor sets to be used or shown off, and I, I try to make everyone uh, happy. Another lovely little settlement. With uh, a bunch of half-naked NPCs outside, so that's business as usual. Can I use ebony armor? Sure. I can use ebony armor. There we go. You'd even use my favorite ebony shield, Kyle. I do have that one on me, actually. <laughs> oh, the heck do you write that? Excuchelan? I every, every time cool. I was writing an update on the um, on our server, I was giving it a different name, so I called it the Escalope of Coral, the Escalator of Coral. Damn you, Doig. Damn you. <laughs> I see someone asking if they can visit the testing hall. Yes, the testing hall is going to be in Sky Oblivion. And yes, uh, you'll probably still be able to talk to Todd in one of the cells. <laughs> there may even be a super secret loading screen. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> It was my it I mean, was my cat. It was when I was testing the loading screens. It was my cat, and then Kyle, um, the rebel, said to me, "You must remove your cat, so uh, so it doesn't come up on streams." Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a mean son of a bitch to work with, but hey, what are you gonna do? I've seen people ask occasionally about showing off one of the robes. Oh yeah, sure. So this is a really nice one that I like, the Archmage robes. <clears throat> this looks a uh, proper battle mage, yeah, I like this combination actually. <laughs> Ready for a magic war. You want to roleplay as Martin Septum? Grey tattered robes, classic. We have um, the Mythic Dawn. Mythic Dawn robe. But I believe there's a really cool armor set as well that's in the works by uh, Borks. Which I'm quite looking forward to. Could totally show off the Imperial Watch armor too. If we keep if we keep going like this, I'm gonna change armor armor and clothing sets every five seconds. I'm here for it though. I like it. I like being able to show off all the different uh, stuff in him. Actually, something I've not shown off at all. Um, this lovely fancy doublé. Look at we that. We also have a lot of jewelry, <clears throat> um, which I think don't think we're showing off too much. True, true. I have. I actually brought a few with me today. So here is one that I really, really like, the Ring of Khajiit, which kind of has like a cat's iris in the gem. It took me 
spending a long time on doing the cube map for that. <laughs> so good though. And we have the Jewel of Rumare, which is the, the lake um, around the Imperial City. Make an educated guess what quest you might be getting this one from. These are um, these are quest items, so we like being able to make new ones or like unique models because they're a bit more memorable, memorable that way. Uh, but the truth is more so than wanting to make unique models. Um, Skyblivian has a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, and many 3D artists like switching things up a little bit every once in a while. Um, so we have very talented artists who will grind through, you know, countless sets of architecture or statue after statue. Um, and will sometimes want to pick up something a bit more interesting to work on, which is why, uh, which is why we have quite a few unique weapons and armors and jewelry in the game. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's, it, it is a volunteer project, so we, we try to focus as much as we can on what we need. But sometimes we simply have to do two things that we actually enjoy, work on some stuff that we, we like. So which is so where... Um, generally, we'll keep sort of the nice, cool things as a reward. Yeah. The, uh, the bits which are more like work. Yeah, so for instance, early in the stream we did a we did a quest where we killed the uh, the I don't know the skooma dealer or whatever kind of drug dealer that man was, um, and he had a ring on him, um, which was using a generic model uh, of ours uh, because there's no point in making a unique ring for a quest item that you're going to give away 30 minutes later anyway. Um, you know that 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 would be a waste of time. But this, uh, like the jewel of Romara. Is a, is a good investment of a bit of extra time, I think. <clears throat> Show of children, sure. This is one of the f very first unique weapons we actually made. It's a short sword, which has a unique freeze effect. It's quite lovely. <clears throat> um, and we're actually arriving in... or close to the city of Coral now, which is being worked on by Jero at the moment. Wayne and Priory, you should all know this location. Um, again, linking to the start of the stream, we mentioned we want to show the current state of the game. And the current state of the game is not just, you know, pretty windmills and beautiful cities, it's also a lot of purple sometimes, like missing textures, or meshes that still need to be remade, or floating signs. We have them all. Having said that, um, Jero started working on this area like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. He is, um, he is scary fast. I um, I'm honestly I, I'm I'm unable to keep up with him. He um, I think he beats every every level designer in the team. Not that it's a competition, of course, but if it was, <laughs> we'd be in trouble. Yeah. Ah <clears throat> oh, no! Unfortunately, that got us another crash. I hope again it's not due to me adding some last minute files. There, there are some bits in um, Rebels Load Order that need a little bit of a shifting around, which is part of the um, bits we were talking on earlier. So those um, load screens which are currently black shouldn't be black, and that is something that I need to work on. Yeah, we made we made the mistake um, before the stream started of... Well, I say we. I guess if anyone's to blame, it's me for asking everyone to send in some stuff. I should know better. Um, we will fix it, though. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll fix it, but uh, fingers crossed that we can get into the game and show off the city, because that's, in the end, the uh, the goal of this stream. And if I broke it, well... If you break it, you buy it. 
five rebel blocks. Yes. Will we be able to use controllers in Skyblivion? Super excited to see how this plays. Yes, certainly. Um, many of the developers have played it with a controller. I don't because I don't have a controller with me here. Um, but maybe that's something I should do for next stream. I'm just terrible when it comes to um, playing with a controller. Uh, but yeah. Alright, let's try. Ugh. Right. Seen a question there. Cheese for everyone. And uh, yes. And um, we've actually remade all of the Oblivion cheeses, which is quite fun. Quite a fun job. Ooh, another really good one. Sorry, I uh, I keep finding new loading screens that I've not seen, which is odd because I've I've restarted this game. Hundreds of times easily. So yeah, this is um. 50, 50 load screens. This is one of the the cities that's currently being worked on. It's something that I tried to get in a proper state before we started the stream, but unfortunately I was unable to get the files for this in time. That's actually not true. I just realized uh, I did get sent the files. I forgot to install them. Actually, <laughs> so that's <laughs> again my bad. Uh, those files include. Um, this asset, which has been remade by Reezer, who's here in the chat now, uh, yes. as well as all the missing textures. <laughs> so you're seeing purple because of me, and I apologize for that. Also, I found this note while doing a test run already today. I thought uh, we could read it. <laughs> <laughs> it, made me, it made me laugh out loud earlier today. Uh, it's pretty funny. But yeah. We're not. We're not. We're clearly not supposed to be here yet. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at it anyway. Because Jero is not here to stop me. So, what is he gonna do about it? It's been. Uh, it's been a really wonderful effort, like a team effort, work on this city. Because we've had uh, meshes from Beyond Skyrim to help us out. Uh, we've remade a couple of missing houses that their package didn't include. And. To be honest, it's coming together quite nicely. And actually, uh, Fish Fiends, weren't you working on the Mage Guild quest for Coral earlier this week? Yeah, yeah. I uh, literally ten minutes before we started this stream, I was just uh, rounding out the Fingers of the Mountain quest line. Uh, it's one of the very few quests in Oblivion that have a lot of branch or have branching paths, so you can handle things in different ways. Um, and yeah took a bit more effort than a lot of Oblivion quests do to implement, but as of this morning, it's uh, playing really well, and I'm excited to share it with everyone. Hell yeah. So, I actually worked on the uh, the location where you go to for this quest in the Clovian Highlands. So I am quite looking forward to being able to play that and see it in action, because that location turned out pretty nice. I was I actually talking to someone uh, the other day about the fact that I think I may have implemented every quest in Coral. Oh, shit. I, I, I was looking at the list of quests, and I think I have implemented every single one of the quests that take place here. So that was a pretty neat thing to see, and I'm really excited for it to be finished uh, when Jera's done with it, so I can see some of my quests uh, in a shinier setting. Um, something I just want to address real quick as well. First of all, that's really fucking exciting. So, can we maybe get some, uh, I don't know, some spam, some love in the chat for, uh, Fish Fiend, who's been honestly, like, chewing through quests like a madman the last year and a half, at the very least. It's been, uh, very cool to see all the progress. Um, on top of that, all these naked men... Um, <laughs> the, 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 they're, they're called Jeremy. Um, Jeremy is kind of Skyblivian's mascot, uh, because we use him to see if, um, the proportions in game are correct. So he's like our human, a human dummy that'll show us, okay, this, this tree that's placed is maybe too big or too small, or this location needs to be wider, higher, lower, etc. Um, so yeah, to, to not get any 
strange ideas into your heads on why there's a naked man everywhere. Uh, it's it's for testing purpose only, and he will it's, be it's removed. Fish being is doing all the work in this area. <laughs> <laughs> why? Right, I do so want to get uh, uh, Jeremy's everywhere. I'm, I'm not sure we fully covered earlier, but the the purple means that the texture's missing or not there on the Rebel's computer. Yes, that's correct. I really love this uh, this ditch next to the cathedral. That is. It's excellent. I love it. It's very cool. Very simple, small thing, but no one else has come up with it. So, props to Jero. <laughs> Someone's very insistent that we show the dog from the e the original Oblivion E3 demo. I don't know what house that's in. Uh, I think... I think it's this one. The dog lady. But I might be wrong. It could also be one of these. I mean, I think, I think it was this one. Jeroland, that doesn't sound right. Is that right? No, it doesn't. Nah. Oh, it was the bookstore, apparently. Ah. Renoir's books. Uh, disclaimer though that the interior has not yet been worked on. Welcome so to Renoir's what, what we're going to see in the, the interior is, is um, assets, some assets which have been replaced, some which haven't, want, so, so you'll see the uh, new carpets are in there, but they've uh, not maybe... Yes, he lives here near Coral, at Wayne and Priory. Leave the town... Right, let's focus on... Uh, on the good stuff, though, because I have quite a few more things to show tonight, actually. Um, the region I worked on that I'm quite happy with uh, is the Gold Coast, which is a Mediterranean part of the map, um, where I would like to show uh, the Shrine of Malakath. Uh, and from there, we'll take a look at the outskirts of Anvil as well. Oh, this one is so... Uh, sorry again, but this one is so freaking cool as well. That was my favorite. Okay. My hammer is bigger. And it boinks. <laughs> oh... So when uh, when the when the souls of your uh, fallen enemies get claimed, the blade actually makes a sucking sound. I'm not sure if you can hear it on the stream because you know we talk through it a little bit, and there's a lot of things going on, but it is <laughs> the coolest thing. Um, and yeah, we've arrived in the Gold Coast, which currently looks more like the Grey Coast. To be fair. Um, I do very much love the uh, the foggy weather as well. The foggy coast. Gold coast. Sorry, I have to do this. Oh. Screwed it up. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. Yeah, so the, the Volandrung will uh, stun enemies when you hit the ground. You hadn't noticed yet. Enemies and small deer. <laughs> yeah. Let's clarify that point. <laughs> Oh yeah, some people have asked about horse armor. Um, so, to be honest, horse armor and all those smaller DLC are things that we kind of 
avoid because it's not part of the main game. Having said that, someone on the team really, really wanted to make it. So it's actually already done. There's, there's lots of stuff that everyone in the team sort of might want to do. And it'll become, I've got a little nice to have notepad document where I'll write everything down and um, I'm sure I won't be alone it's just, just um, in terms of we don't want to scope creep and just do the um, uh, what we have to do to convert Oblivion over but there's there's a ton of stuff which would be cool quality of life bits and pieces that we might be releasing separately as mods afterwards or maybe rolling into future releases yeah, I just uh, realized I took a wrong turn, but I might as well quickly show off an area I worked on that I'm I'm quite happy with. Uh, as I was working on the Gold Coast, um, streaming this actually, I streamed this from A to Z. I hope I have the video of it uh, to upload on YouTube. Uh, but we made a quarry, which turned out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, it's not a location where you can do anything, it's just a cool location to find and run around with, or run around in if you want to, and maybe kill a mountain lion with a clan fear. That seems like a fair fight. And this quarry won't disappear like the one in Fallout 4. Wait, what? Yeah, it's disappearing quarry. There's a bug release in Fallout 4. Those guys can just uh, chill. I didn't know that. Um, I will mention again that the uh, the current game doesn't have nav mesh, which makes it impossible for NPCs to move around, which is why that mountain lion uh, and the clan fear have trouble actually attacking one another, because they more or less cannot see the other one. Um, which is a very easy thing to fix. We simply have to go over all the, the entire map and put down triangles. Which sounds very weird, but trust me, that's how it works. Um, we go over the entire map, put down triangles, and anywhere you can't walk on, we don't put a triangle down. Um, and that way you get like a massive grid as an overlay, uh, which will show the NPCs, okay, I can go there, but I can't go there. Because we, as humans, we have this thing called sight um, through our wonderful eyes so we can see where we can go NPCs although they have eyes they don't actually work as eyes this is also um, again going back to the start of the stream we want to show the finished stuff but also the unfinished stuff this is where the city of such will be um, I was supposed to be working on this uh, but in the end I found my skills to be lacking to to build this um, and it has been given to someone else who will be working on it um, in the next merge. So for now just pretend like none of this is here and soon someone else will take it on and we'll do a, a good job with it I'm sure. Um, something we can look at and that I can take credit for though um, is everything west of here. Um, starting with the Shrine of Malakath, which I actually finished last week before the trailer went live. Which I'm fairly happy with. It turned out uh, pretty good. Based off of concept art from Hinamoto. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice little, uh, little location in the, uh, the Gold Coast. So a question which might be good for Fish Fiend. Will crime be global or regional like in Skyrim? So we haven't made a firm decision on that yet. Um, either option is possible. Uh, we're still currently deciding on that. Uh, we haven't fully implemented the crime system yet. Uh, once that's further along, I'm sure we'll be happy to share it with you guys, but I can't give a concrete answer on that at the moment because we haven't decided. Having said that, the quest department generally likes to take the mentality of uh, we will use whatever system we th feel is uh, stronger from whichever game. So for some mechanics, we're erring more on the side of uh, 
uh, the Skyrim design where we feel that Skyrim improved on Oblivion. Um, and for other aspects like the crime system, uh, we haven't decided where we fall on that yet. There's, there's a few elements like that, sort of just quality of life, so you'll notice we have added carriages in. And um, another thing which we're thinking on is having bards in inns. Which would, wouldn't be too complicated or necessarily massive projects for us to add, like uh, reforming the, uh, the jail system might. Um, maybe good to note the location where we're at uh, right now. This is called Crowhaven. In Oblivion, originally this place was called Fort Crowhaven, which is a little bit odd because uh, you will be sent here um, as part of the uh, arena quest line. I won't spoil exactly why you go here and what you do, um, but Essentially, what you learn is that this place used to be an estate. Um, and it's been abandoned for quite some years and you're you're sent here to retrieve something. Um, the weird thing is though that in Oblivion, this place was a fort. Uh, and didn't look at all like an estate where a very rich man once lived. Um, which you learn through dialogue that they did. Um, so it's one of the cool locations where the level designer, which in this case was Dikis, can take just a, a small piece of dialogue and make something very awesome and unique with it. And I, for one, am super, super happy with, uh, with the results. I think it's a very cool location uh, in the game. It turned out really, really nicely. Also, I'm using Goldbrand. Uh, I saw someone asking what sort this is. It is Goldbrand. It's a Daedric artifact with unique enchantments, which are that you can go up to someone and slap them with fire, or there's another skeleton around the corner here. I can feel it. Or you can perform a power attack from a distance, and it'll send a, uh, a beam of fire their way is uh, pretty cool. But yeah. Abandoned mansion. And, Very uh, nice. To answer some of the questions, yes, this area is 100% Italy inspired. Yes, yeah. I mean, not 100%, but... <laughs> <Very close>. 95. <laughs> it's inspired by the, uh, the Mediterranean, and yes, the architecture style is also very Roman from uh, the same region. No, no walking skeletons in uh, Italy, as far as I'm aware. I do think they have plenty of crypts, though, if that counts. But my partner's in Italy right now, and she's she's sending me pictures of going around uh, catacombs. It was amazing. I'm very, very jealous. Oh, that is my fault. I'm actually gonna... So we have a debug tool in the game, which allows me in this case to see the coordinates where we are exactly, uh, which I can now write down so I can put that flower to the ground. And that way it won't be floating anymore. I'm currently taking you down the, the beach, the beachfront. Uh, simply because, I don't know, it's a nice change of scenery. We've seen the very pretty golden fields. Up next we have some pretty uh, beachheads. I'll take that. Actually, uh, Carl, it'd be swell if we could find one of the new known routes. Oh yeah, there's, uh, there's a couple along the beach, I'm sure. Yeah, 
I see a baddie. Yes, I did. I see someone asking, uh, how many man hours do you think has been put into the project overall? And I feel like the answer to that is, it's immeasurable. Many, many. We have thousands. Three, two, tens of thousands to, to be um, Do some harvesting. So I've made the models, but the, um, because of the way known is to harvest in Oblivion is very different to Skyrim. That's why you're currently pulling up the whole thing. <laughs> we just need to uh, assign it right in creation kit. And if you check your inventory, Kyle, you'll have a little nary bulb. I do. All we need now is for a certain someone to make the Nern root sapling as well. Yeah, a little baby Nern root. Maybe we should make him, uh, the baby nerd would look like, uh, baby Groot. Feels very, uh, fitting and immersive, for sure. There's, uh, a lot of seagulls as well that I put down in some of the areas. Mainly, uh, above those cliffs, you can see them, uh, floating around. This mud crab has no fear. Approaching Someone a man spotted. with a fiery sword. Someone spotted your uh, Pirates of the Caribbean reference straight away. Sweet. Glad to hear it. <laughs> I, I was kind of baiting them. I, I kept looking like uh, towards the <laughs> towards the Easter egg. Alright. Poor crab? No, no. It's not, not poor crab. We will be able to take him with us forever. He's right here in the swords. He has eternal life now. You're welcome. Just to see the question of running animation, so we're not up um, updating or changing the base Skyrim animations. Uh, so all, all our all our testing is going to be just when we're. Testing, armor waiting, everything. It's all on the native Skyrim. But then, if there are any mods um, which change animations, I, I don't believe that necessarily cause any issues. No, they cars. shouldn't. People can use animation mods as, as they uh, as they please. There's no problem. Yeah. So, so we're, we're basically making the base, and then people can build on it, which would be very happy for them to do. And we're probably going to be building on it ourselves after release. That is correct. Someone's asking about vampire gameplay. Uh, it's another thing that I've uh, recently been working on. And I'm trying to find a balance between the uh, mechanics of Skyrim, but with the reward and punishment that exists in Oblivion. So it will, will play a lot more like it, did, it does in Skyrim, but you'll have that more severe punishment and uh, powerful reward for being a vampire. So rather than just reducing your regeneration, you'll actually take damage in the sun, but you are significantly more powerful when you're a vampire. Question there, does Rebel let us out of the basement for the holidays? <laughs> no. No. Uh, no, but if we're very productive, sometimes they'll put like flat food under the door, so pancakes. <laughs> yes. Um, something I really want to highlight here is some fantastic work recently by some of the team members. Um, I myself have landscaped the area a while ago and I worked on the uh, the lighthouse islands, which I'm very happy with. But it's since been uh, take, uh, picked up by Riesler, who's in the chat now, um, who's been remaking all the castle walls, um, towers, and who actually also, together with another dev developer of ours, Shadow, made a very cool addition, uh, which is a semi-functional and immersive lighthouse. Um, there is a shiny plate reflecting the light from a big open fire in the lighthouse, 
um, which I'll show off at night time now as well. To be honest, I, I've actually not seen it at night time yet, so I'm kind yeah, of it's really excited too. During the night. Ooh, that does look very cool. Let's see if I can get it with some fog. Oh, <laughs> that looks. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Seeing some questions around release in the uh, in the chat, so I would uh, suggest that everyone have a um, have a look see at our release uh, date trailer. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be too bright during the day, but it's, it's something we will have to. Oh, that looks great. That's a good level. Adjust. Yeah, oh yeah, that's really nice. I think I'm, uh, with this, it might be a case of, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah. It's uh, it's not easy to make it... Uh, no, it's uh, hard. <laughs> uh, we might not, be able to finish right. the time of day as well. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, for sure we can do that. Of course. With script. That's our solution. Oh, the moon. Yeah, I want to I wanna get a picture where the moon's behind it. Definitely not behind it now. It's gone completely. Oh. I don't think I can do it. You'll have to take it from the other direction. <laughs> Alright, well, good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'll, um, I'll take a quick look at the... Uh... Uh, the Lighthouse Island, and then we can move to the next location. I think we might take a quick peek at uh, Kvatch. Warning though, Kvatch is uh, not really in a showcaseable state. It's not... Uh, I, I don't have the updates that you guys saw in the trailer. Main issue is that my Oblivion Gate is not animated yet. But it will be with the uh, the next internal update. And I would the, like to uh, take... The load order in the right... Uh, <laughs> the right order. Yes. I would, I would have loved to take credits for the... Uh, the way this island looks uh, with the lighthouse and everything. But the truth is that we had a concept artist on the team who made a really, really fantastic uh, piece of concept art that I pretty much followed to the T, uh, Hinamoto. When I was looking for a, uh, a good concept artist for their game, <laughs> give him a ring, because uh, that man knows how to draw. And he actually does level design as well these days. Um, he's been learning the creation kit and does really damn good, uh, damn good work. Probably helps that you have an eye for that kind of uh, detail. And I think even this dock, I didn't come up with. He uh, he made a concept for that I could just follow. I can I can take credit for the clutter work though. That's the only thing I can take credit for. Finally. Also, a question on uh, asking what you're running on, uh, Kyle. And I, I, th I think um, so. I run using um, it's an AT Ti, and I think I'm still using a Ryzen 1800X, which is getting quite dated now. Uh, and I'm not running into um, that many uh, issues. And if they are, it's stuff which we need to get on top of because uh, it's generally just maybe an asset or two or a bit. Um, too high, too high poly, or maybe we're calling up uh, quite large textures. Uh, but I think um, considering Carl's streaming at the same time. Yeah, it's um, it's not ideal to be showcasing the game in this way, I suppose. Um, but there's also a good bit of optimization that has to be done, which is exactly, again, you know, why we're uh, not releasing yet. It's why we need the 2025 date to make all these improvements to the game so it runs better. Um, this isn't finished, but I thought I'd show it off anyway, and I think I'll put on 
uh, some mithra armor because then you can actually see me. Um, this is uh, Kavachin's current shape. I've been working on this, uh, but there's some things that the trailer has that I don't, which is the the working gate, for one. Uh, also, the armor set for the Kavach soldiers was implemented for the trailer, uh, which I don't have yet. Else is pretty much as is. We showed it. And these scamps are, uh, are scamps fire resistant? Yes. Well, that explains. I mean, I guess the day three you always want shot. A danger creature, it would help to be fire resistant. Yeah, I kind of figured. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. Right, oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you, uh, which was Rin's work on Echo Cave, which is where we saw Monomarco. I think Tees also mentioned his uh, castle, Rebel. I don't have the assets for it. Oh, you don't have the assets? Oh, that's all I'm yeah. now. Yeah. So, this is where you're going to be facing off against Monomarco. Um... Maybe Scott, you can tell again what the what the fight uh, was like in original Oblivion and what we've uh, or what we we're starting to do with the uh, uh, the final boss fight. Oh my god, I got an arrow in the knee, by the way. Shit. <laughs> Game over, boys. Stare at a triple scar of injury. Um, in in the original Oblivion version of this boss fight, you walked into this tiny little cave, talked to this generic. Ultima that just stood there with the same generic Ultima voice. Uh, he raised up some barriers to trap you in, and then you promptly killed him with two swings of a steel sword because he was ridiculously weak. With Sky Oblivion, we really wanted to try and amp up some of those uh, moments that should be significant in the story, like fighting someone like Manamaka, who's meant to be this big, powerful, first necromancer to ever exist. Uh, we've gone and been trying to make new gameplay mechanics uh, for the fight, uh, make the fight more interesting. Like these uh, skeletons you're seeing at the moment that are summoned by the Staff of Worms. Unfortunately, without the nav mesh, you can't really see it, but these skeletons will actually run at the enemy and explode in like a, a uh, explosion of like bile or acid or something like that like you've just seen on Kyle's screen just to try and make these moments that should be impactful uh, more significant when you're playing the game yeah exactly and it, it helps when someone does a really really good job level design wise to uh, make the fight more memorable as well or I, I guess the the arena really more more uh, memorable and I, I think we can safely say not just uh, quest locations so I, I don't think you could say any of the dungeons in the game are generic. That's true. I mean, there, there's still, you know, sometimes there's, a there's cave some, is just uh, a cave, a cave and there's nothing. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, like, compared to Oblivion's caves and mines, which are all uh, beige cells. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, with that in mind, though, uh, I have run out of locations on my list to uh, look at, so maybe people in chat have some requests. What mine you were working on a while ago, Rebel? The one with um, the sunlight, the sunbeams coming down, the waterfall from inside. Mm. Sorry, what? There's like a, a sinkhole in the mine, and you look up and you can see vegetation. There's like wooden scaffolding. Oh, that's the mine I did. I hate it. Oh, that's gorgeous. No, I hate. I hate it. No, <laughs> you're, you're just being you're just being critical of it. Maybe. <laughs> I, I to be honest, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I'm seeing dive rock. 
I'm, I'm seeing a lot of Cloud Ruler Temple on the YouTube chat. Oh, yeah, Cloud Ruler Temple, that's the one I, uh, I forgot. And the Aelid Ruins as well. I think, so the, the, the slight issue with Cloud Ruler Temple is we have new assets that I'm not sure if I have. Uh, so... I guess Let's Die Rock see. was also location, but I'm not sure if it will be that pretty without the current load enabled. Because I think you don't have that, right? Yeah, but we can uh, we can see. Oh yeah, I, I do have the new Cloud Rule sample. Yeah, I guess we All should right. show interior elite, elite or... Uh, we don't have any interior locations yet because All they right, yeah. are from this merge and we haven't put them all into the game yet. Yeah, yeah that's true. Damn it! I'm trying to get the the snowstorm, the other snowstorm. Of course, now it doesn't work. We have a tool now that allows you to change the weathers and edit the weathers on the fly, and of course, I don't have that installed. Seen quite a few show of Skyrims, which I think is quite funny. Mm -hmm. That's the you can have a go at the base game. <laughs> a couple people asking for the waterfront as well. Uh, once we've had a look around Cloud Ruler. Yeah, sure, we can uh, we can do that too. Uh, first, we're gonna go to Dive Rock. Um, also, a quick thank you to everyone on Twitch. I see follows. Um, please take a look at the adventure stream team there's a lot of people on there who stream uh fish fiend the the guy talking about the quests in the chat with us today he streams on uh twitch every once in a while uh which is very in my opinion one of the most interesting streams because you're the only person who does quest implementation live on twitch um so please do give all of them a follow as well um some really good people uh in that list So Heavy Burns was telling me that there's uh, something causing a crash <clears throat> in this area, but so far, so good. Something nice that was done with Cloud Rudu Temple is, uh, especially from a distance, you will see like in front of me here, <clears throat> it's, it, it goes away when you get close to it, but we put actual clouds around the temple. Um, so from a distance, it's kind of shrouded by uh, mist or well, by clouds, which I think looks uh, looks quite cool. They um, they tend to sort of fade away when you get close to them, though. Oh, actually, I should maybe show off a bit of Bruma as well, because that that was shown in the trailer too. So we do have a good bit of work left to do on um, on the Gerald Mountains. Cloud Ruler Temple is is good. It's good to go. Uh, but the Gerald Mountains itself needs some work. <clears throat> like for instance, the texture we have for the rocks is very dark, which we want to replace with a more Skyrim-esque light gray. So it looks a bit more, you know, like it did in Skyrim. Uh, because it is supposed to be the same region at the end of the day. Uh, but the temple looking pretty damn snazzy. I suppose we have to fix the stairs as well. Uh, question there, will you be able to shout? And so in, in Oblivion you're of course not the Dragonborn. But they'll um, also be sort of daily powers and things that'll be able to be assigned to that slot. And I think there's some other um, perks you can get. Yeah, there's, there's a few ways you can utilize uh, what used to be the shouts. Um, at some point, we wanted to use quick casting as well. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not something we ever really got off the ground. Um, and right now, it's just not a focus either. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, 
we'll leave it as is for the time being. Um, but that means there's there. I mean, there's no sh shouts for you to get in in, in Skyblivion. There's also no dragons to kill for uh, for their souls. So all in all, uh, there's no real point to shouts in the game. Yeah, I hope you liked uh, the preview of Cloud River Temple. Um, let me travel to the nearby castle of Bruma. Oh, Reddit. Ooh, this one is good too. I don't think I've seen this one either. Is it possible that your load screen update uh, made certain load screens that didn't appear before appear? No, uh, your your load orders um, are not the right way around, and it's um, there's one of the ones that isn't um, flying because it's not got the correct masters. Oh, okay. Something cool about um, Bruma Castle is that when you're doing the main quest and you're starting to gather uh, the forces of the different cities to help out with the uh, the, the, the Kavach invasion or the uh, the Daedric invasion, um, there will be camps that represent the different cities. So what I did is I've used the uh, the practice grounds here. Uh, to put down different tents with banners belonging to the city guards who uh, occupy them. So there will be guards from Coral, Chadenhall, uh, Leowin, Anvil, um, and then some Imperial Legionnaires as well, who all will have their own <clears throat> banner to represent the, the small camp that they've put together. Um, because there's not that much room, there will also be guards stationed here on the front. Um, and the cool thing is that uh, in Oblivion and in Sky Oblivion as well, you will be able to um, do quests to try and get the other cities to help you out, to send uh, their forces with you to support. Um, so if you don't do those quests, certain uh, certain soldiers will not be joining the fight. Um, so the cool thing is that depending on who you can rally to your aid, um, there will be you know some camps missing from uh, from the front, uh, from the courtyard, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Talked about pretty cool. This Talos statue is uh, really, really good. I really like it. There's a few small things that need to be fixed with Bruma. So we have the new gates. Uh, unfortunately, the rotation of the gates has changed with the model that they replaced. So I need to go in and fix that. I also saw some signs or uh, some fences that were replaced, which are now broken. Little things like that will happen um, throughout development, but uh, it's not a problem. Actually, uh, Reezer, I think that the new carts are not positioned properly because uh, you can see some cargo hanging out the side where the old cart used to be. Yeah, they should not replace. That's my bad. They shouldn't replace the old ones. It ah, should be an okay. addition. So you can choose. Okay. That's that's good, yeah. Good. Yeah. So if you want the old raggedy carriages, you should be able to have them as well, of course. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, so we have question... three stages. Yeah, go on to you. Scott. I was, I was just going to say the question keeps popping up about uh, whether or not you can get married in Sky Oblivion, and in our initial release, no, you won't be able to get married because there's no dialogue in Oblivion that would support that, unfortunately. The framework is well known. Modders know how to work with it. So that would be something that I wouldn't envision taking very long at all. Uh, people have been asking about Dive Rock. A lot. Um, the area itself doesn't look too special. Um, it's not quite finished. No, it's not. Um, but I can show you dive rock regardless. Um, I wonder if we'd be able to spawn in any irritating uh, blonde altness. 
at this point in time? No. <laughs> We have to we have to uh, to keep the one in the pocket for the release so we can make some cool meme videos throwing the adoring fan off this place. Ah, I gotcha. Question for the chat: If you could go anywhere on the map right now, where would you go? Yes, the dungeons are very much more unique in Skyblivion than they are in Base Oblivion. Uh, I'd say all of them have their own flavor, essentially. So it was the onions. Dungeons. Oh, dungeons! I but wait, yes, our yeah, our, our, onions our, our, our onions are also unique. <laughs> <laughs> there, yes, our onion models are also yeah. really nice and fancy. I did, I did update our leak model. That's exactly, we have nice gro groceries. See, um... Might be worth checking out some of the food and everything on the tables, just so um, people can sort of see, and then we can explain the amount of work that goes into doing a single piece of cheese. You just want to show off your own work. Also, I want to show off my own work. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I see a pretty interesting one, actually. Um, what is what is that forest called with the? Uh, um uh, the Minotaur? unicorn yeah the minotaurs as well <clears throat> i know it's around here somewhere there the grove uh above the cave icon above robbers glen cave oh it's, it doesn't have a marker no no it's the oh grove. oh sorry yeah i see i see yeah i was just blind So this is both a full game and a Skyrim mod. This is a total conversion mod recreating the game Oblivion within Skyrim. And it'll be free to download, but you must own Skyrim and Oblivion. This is actually a, uh, a hidden area in the game um, where there's a Minotaur guarded, or I'm sorry, a unicorn guarded by an uh, angry minotaur. Now, again, because we don't have navigational mesh, the minotaurs really don't like us, and they want to kill us, but they can't because they cannot see exactly where we are. Which, to be fair, gives us a bit of an upper hand. And I just want to test if this weapon is working. It would appear so. So this, uh, this unique weapon spawns a, a duplicate, essentially, which will attack the, uh, or should attack the original, uh, enemy. Oh god, our guy is getting pounded. Are they both, right. um, flagged as hostile, though? Sorry? The duplicate. I'm four adults, four Yeah, there's, um... Ah, oh, okay. There, there's a... Clearly, a bug with it because it's not working as in, uh, intended. <laughs> I love the the move <laughs> when you hit them. <laughs> well, it sounds a bit sad to be honest, but yeah, I think we're gonna leave the rest of them alone. Uh, where did the Minotaur run off, or the the unicorn run, run off? Oh, there it is. I'm just gonna. Steal that. Um, I made I made a plugin. Oh, we can't because it's right aggressive. That's so bad. I um I made a plugin not so long ago, and that's also a bit of a bug. That changed the uh, the horse um, skill or the horse attributes. So the Minotaur would be the fastest horse in the game, followed by black horse, white horse, etc. So I was kind of hoping to show that off because the. I think we did, I say, did I say Minotaur or would again? Be the fastest horse in the game. God, you, 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 not, okay. Not to be clear, you cannot ride, ride the Minotaur. Ride. You can only ride the Unicorn. I just can't seem to get Minotaur out of my head. Um, but there will be just like an Oblivion. There will be differences in uh, the speed of the different horses. There's also different in price. 
And to be honest, it's a, it's a small thing, but I was kind of sad that Skyrim didn't have that. Because Oblivion did, and I, I kind of liked having to grind um, to get the best and fastest horse in the game. That was kind of a cool thing for me as a kid. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's okay. Skyrim horses were slow uh, fed boys. Just on prices, so currently everything's got, I believe currently everything's got the um, original Oblivion price tag attached to yeah. it. But yeah, that's um, as, as we're going forward and probably nearer to the end of development, we'll be revisiting and playing through and seeing if that still makes sense. I think it should make sense because the, the prices of items in the game are similar to what Oblivion had as well. And I, I always found Oblivion to be higher. quite difficult to to get rich quick in Skyrim, I'm uh, I'm rich by level 20, whereas in Oblivion, I'm in level 40, I still struggle. I think things are a lot more expensive than in Skyrim, to my, to my memory at least. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I prefer that it means if something's very shiny and, yeah, and cool in a shop, then you can't just buy it immediately. You will need to plan what you're spending money on. Yeah, and on top of that, I think what also helps is that in, in Oblivion originally, the, due to the, the kind of the broken level scaling, at some point you will have bandits running around in ebony armor. Uh, so once you get to a certain level, you can just you know pick up really high tier weapons and armor and sell that at any given shop, which is a bit of, it's it's very broken uh, because you know you get rich way too quickly. Uh, but we have fixed, I want to say, the the level scaling, so that doesn't happen anymore. I mean. Enemies will still scale with your level, but at least they won't be wearing armor that's supposed to be for, you know, only the most elite. So I've seen a few questions around sort of bugs from Oblivion. Um, and so because it, because it's been sort of pulled over to the Skyrim system, and I know... Um, uh, actually, yeah, officially, would you rather take this one? So, because yeah, I know sure. check out the wiki and see what were the or original bugs and things. So, the mentality we generally have when implementing quests, at least, for bugs is if it's uh, a bug that impacts gameplay or really messes with the flow of a quest, we'll address that and fix that. Um, we will keep a lot of the quirks that exist in quests that may or may not be bugs, but you look at and go, mm, that's kind of funny. You know, that, that there's a little bit of that jank that exists in Oblivion. Like, uh, just the way NPCs talk to each other, for example, or I'm trying to think of an example of a, a bug that is particularly funny that we've left in. But no, so if a bug is going to ruin a gameplay experience for you, we comb through the wiki for every quest we implement and we check to make sure that those bugs don't uh, stay in Skyblivion. That answer the question? That yeah, was a good answer. I liked it. So <laughs> someone said I think that you're from New Zealand, but other than that. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll quietly accept that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've completely forgot to mention, and to be fair, I only have half the set with me now, is that all the 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 guards in Skyblivion will have different armor sets depending on where they're stationed. So here we have the Envil Curus and Shield. I'm missing the helmet. Um, actually, I know a place where to, to get all of them. Uh, let me let me go through this uh, this old fort real quick. Slice and dice my way through and then I'll... Uh... I'll show it off. Actually, I think we can fast travel. There's no enemies that close to us. Um, there we go. I'm seeing a few questions around Bloom. Um, I believe that is an in-game setting which you can fiddle with.
and uh, as, as we're not using um, any, not HDR, uh, any ESB, it should be compatible with adding any others, though the ones for Skyrim might look strange, so it might need to be a custom e and I, um, I quite enjoyed working on this location. Not sure where I got the inspiration from, but I think it turned out quite nicely. Supposed to represent a uh, a goblin raid, and this is also where you can get a full set of uh, guard armor for Envil. Should you ever want to roleplay? We've Except for my doughy make, face. We've tried to make sort of unique armor sets. Um, uh, attainable without necessarily having to kill a guard. <laughs> also, that, that jewel of Ramara, that looks so fucking cool, man. It looks really pretty on your, uh, on your character. Yeah, I'm, I'm in love with the Anvil armor. I think out of all the guard armors, it may be my favorite. Let's hope that uh, the city of Anvil will do it justice, eh? Of course. I'm not biased at any way. Um, did you guys see any other requests, like popular requests for plates to check out? When you initially asked, uh, there were a lot of people asking for the Brotherhood Sanctuary again, whether you want to revisit that or not. Okay. Oh, and the waterfront still. Yeah, the waterfront, yeah. Alright, waterfront it is. But there are enemies nearby. I just heard a I heard a bunny die. By my kill all command. I feel a bit bad. Gotta get some of that horizontal action down on the load screen, Sky, so we can show the uh, parallax. What do you mean? So if you move from side to side. Honestly, up until now, I've been doing that with every loading screen. <laughs> so here we have the uh, the waterfront in its current state. What is character creation like? So it'll be ju just like Skyrim, but we'll um, we've made updates to the faces and hairstyles. Is also in the um, in the plan. We've got some of those in already, I believe. So I'm just taking a note of this weird floating bridge. Um, Jero actually gave me the waterfront district to finish off, so I need to not have a floating bridge in there anymore, basically. I do, I do want to apologize and I'll clarify because I've started something. Fish Fiend is from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, requests? Uh, Daedric Shrines. Mm, so I showed off Malakath earlier, we showed off Periite. Almost said Boethius. Uh, ooh, Boethius is pretty good, to be fair. Oh, and or Boethius Ram as well, I guess. 
Wait, yeah, this one looks pretty good too. I'm not sure if Luke finished on the mirror. Yeah. Okay. You mean Boethia? The mirror. Oh, the mirror. Uh, I, I, I got no idea. But this is uh, this is Boethia. I really like this great. So, Clef originally worked on Boethia uh, some years ago at this point, uh, and I picked it up last year somewhere as well. It's a pretty cool, menacing uh, location. I really like it. Uh, I've just seen a pretty good request for a location to look at next, maybe. Uh, just to sure. show off some of our dungeons, maybe uh, Lake Aureus Cabin Caverns, the one, uh, the Dagon Shrine from the main quest. Wait, where? Uh, Lake Aureus Lake. Caverns. Is that uh, in the merge? You have, you should have it for me. It, it, the main room, uh, I guess, is you could show that off. I mean, the dungeon's what? not complete, but. What is it called? Lake Orion Cavern. Lake. Hey, you. Yeah. Oh, right. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, so this dungeon is by no way complete, but uh, we can definitely show it. Can't see anything. Okay. I have this loading screen as well. Do you not have my plugin enabled? Uh oh. Hmm. This is my old. Oh, no. I, I very do. vividly remember saying to the rebel before the screen started, "Can we have a look at your plug in order?" <laughs> no, no, this is not my fault. No, this is Reese's yeah, yeah. fault for oh, not okay. submitting okay. his plugins and then working on a new plugin. I don't understand what you mean. Uh huh. You can go with inside interior scene if it's there or not. What was this the? The, the hidden hideout thing? Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the fishing hut. Oh, yeah. Aww. That's that's such a shame that's not in this. We, we've could... not worked on the arena section yet, guys. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go inside. Yeah, it's... I mean... It's weird. Because the, the landscape changes are my... But not all of them, though. Wait, yeah. So try going inside. I'll see. Otherwise, we'll have to show it off in a future stream, I suppose. I don't know, do people even want another stream like this? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not, no. Yeah. I guess the only way we could be persuaded Parkour. into doing another one like this is if everyone liked the video and left a comment and watched the trailer. In that order. And if there are any... 3D artists watching, or anyone else with skills that they'd um, care to yeah. check out our volunteer section. Definitely also people who have like Skyrim modding experience and you know know how to put assets in game, just to name one thing. Don't hurt me! Too late. You can talk to him. No! Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> no! <laughs> and he doesn't even have a cake. <laughs> you have to use the... You know, you're going no, to I, no, I have the, to go on a killing control. spree. So while uh, while Rebel is mass murdering... Um, it's fine, it's just so, we can go on the shades. You, you are able to do... 97%, I think, of the work the team does, we're able to do with free open source software and there's only some very niche cases where something a bit more powerful might be required What's that? Yeah, you're gonna get the fuck on, boy oh. Let me just, uh... Question, will there be werewolves? I don't believe there were werewolves in Oblivion. 
I see that nice Imperial Guard. This was a <laughs> very <laughs> uh, interesting fight. There's also a statue missing here. Is that Dagon? I think I removed the statue, right? There's also still an old door. Why? Yeah, I think this is... I I have made, made more progress on my... Oh, okay. I keep my interior I keep it separate so you might not have the current version of this. But it's enough to tell you. This is the current progress. Okay, then maybe, maybe I'll just back out of this place and we'll... Uh... You can go to the left there, but a bit behind the rock there. If yeah. you want to get to the main chamber with this big statue. Cool. To the left here now. Uh, no, you went past. This is dead end. You you know that that is right for me. And for you as well, actually. Not left. See, well, it's no, it's right to the hand. Left. left. No, left. Oh. Behind you, left. There, right, left. Okay. Fine. Everyone's enjoying Maze Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> left, right, left. Uh, see, 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 see the question. Um, wish I had the skills to help. Like, I think we, we we covered we covered earlier, but really, it's you can absolutely get the skills. And the, the best the best way to sort of sort of show us that you've. Uh, achieved the right level of skills is to put a mod up into Nexus mods and that can be over so many areas is, is, a, is a tapestry of different skills um, so even on uh, stream right now we've got Fish Fiend, he does quests on uh, sort of coding background, uh, Riesler level design and I do 3D assets and they're very different areas and there's probably something for everyone so if you're interested in something you put in the time and the practice yeah, for sure. We'd be glad to have you on board. Oh no! Killed him. Did I do it right? <laughs> I think you're supposed to save him. Oh, the statue have already okay. fallen, so. No, you can absolutely join the cult. Yeah, you okay. can kill him. <laughs> I'll punish myself. Yes, good. <laughs> oh, can you have a look at the altar um, rug? A bit of cloth over the altar. Oh, yeah. It looks like cloth. To... No, I, did, I just wanted to check something. I think the specular's too high. A little bit. I might turn that down. Yeah, there might be shiny. some treasures in some of the kitten cells. But that Sorry. would be for someone. No, 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 I'm just saying. That will be for people to find out when they play. A little sneak peek. But I think in the current edition, we actually have the. The updated statue as well. A few other improvements. And you can you can take naps on the altars. <laughs> they are they are set up as beds. Yeah. So if you join the Mystic Dawn, you know, just take a quick nap. <laughs> um, talking about quick naps, it's uh, it's been three hours and I have work tomorrow. Um, so as much as I'm I'm loving all the positivity, wow, we're actually a bang on the three-hour mark as well. Um, maybe we can take the last bit of the stream to go through a few more questions while we enjoy the view, and then we uh, we quietly sign off. Um, before yeah. we do that, actually, um, if you haven't yet, please uh, give Skyblivion a follow on social media um, at Skyblivion on. I don't know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, uh, what have you. Um, on, if you're on YouTube, um, maybe consider subscribing, give the stream a like, definitely leave a comment on the trailer and like that too if you enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be a very, very exciting uh, time for us at the Skill Living team. Uh, 2025 seems far away, but um, I think it'll be over before any of us know it. Um, so it's uh, it's gonna be very cool to try and get these last bits of the project done and then get it into your hands as soon as possible. Um, we are looking for new volunteers. Um, I mean, we're always looking for volunteers uh, to help out. Um, the more people help out, the more or the, the the faster the project will progress. It's 
It's that simple. If 200 people joined today, then I'd say maybe 2025 is too far away and 2024 would all of a sudden be possible. Um, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, by all means, we're not, we're not gone yet, so ask your questions and we'll try our best to answer you, uh, you all. I've seen a question on female armor. So all of the armors you've seen today have got female and beast race variants done for all of them. Uh, I believe beast rule. Um, but it's just uh, Kyle's version of the game. It's not letting him swap, <laughs> swap over. I, I can actually do it now because it's the end now. of the stream, oh, so it doesn't matter. Um, what is the, the armor set that had really cool uh, beast race variants, like the, the cat ears and stuff like that? Was that the... I think it was fine steel, wasn't it? Yes, it's fine steel. Uh, I'm just going to rapid fire go through a couple of questions uh, that I'm seeing pop up. Uh, no, you won't be able to turn into a vampire lord in Sky Oblivion because they didn't exist in uh, Oblivion. Um, sadly, we probably won't be able to release on consoles. Yes, there will be uh, Skyrim style crafting to some extent. And there was another question I was going to answer that I've lost. Was that the same for werewolves, Scott? Uh, same for werewolves, no werewolves in Oblivion. Having said that, the framework exists for both in Skyrim, so it will be super easy for modders to add it back in if that's something you want. Next time we do a stream, I'm going to make sure Kyle is loaded up with clutter to look through as well as the armors. I can I, I can still show you clutter. There's uh there's clutter ahead. Will Skablivian support ultra wide monitors? Does Skyrim support ultra wide monitors? I'm sure someone's mm. managed to make that work. If Skyrim supports it then Skablivian will as well. Here, doig, a plate, and a piece of mouton that still needs to be made. I think that's one of those plates that still needs uh, to have improved collisions. So oh, no, one, one, thing, one thing we've learned is that... Um, so Previously, we'd been putting bespoke um, collision meshes for lots of our assets, and then um, I had to look at how Fallout 4 works and realized that they've um, only used primitive shapes. And I think they might have learned a lesson <laughs> between Skyrim and uh, Fallout 4, so we're going to be going through quite a lot of the assets we've made and just for stability, um, making more symbol shapes. I see a question about fishing. Uh, the Creation Club fishing system won't be supported at launch, but uh, it can either be added post-launch or can be modded in quite easily. Again, it's one of, the, one of the things with the framework is there. So just like marriage for modding, it would be easy to get in. But for now, we're just making the base. The same answer applies to survival mode as well. Saw a question about the zombies, if I can show it off, so I'll spawn one in. Um, also, uh, the stream chats will disappear, but the stream will go up on live, or will go up on YouTube um, after we ended it. Um, and I would really like to know uh, what your favorite area was that you've seen today, or maybe favorite weapons, armor set like that. Uh, it would be really cool to read some comments to see uh, what stood out to people. So if, if you see this and the stream has gone live on YouTube, um, drop a comment in the comment section and let us know uh, what your favorite part was so far. 
and we're we're not going to be making a demo or um, doing any beta testing um, outside of the team. I think to, to make a demo it might even add quite a bit of time to the uh, to the project. I, I see the question about speed and acrobatics coming up a lot. Uh, currently, they aren't uh, guaranteed to be in the build. If we can make something that works well, uh, we'll include it. But currently, they aren't set to make an appearance. Uh, another, another thing that would help us out a lot is... Um, this might be a photography one. I don't think we've really got a section with this on the volunteers page. So we need to remake a lot of the plants. Uh, lots of them we've done already. But I think it is um, probably around 50%, which we still need to get through. Um, so we're, we're talking, um, for example, photos of carrot leaves and photos of um, corn leaves and onion leaves and things like that to help us um, put together the meshes and have uh, photos which we have the full rights to be able to use. I've also just killed a fish while I was underwater. And just to show people there's underwater combat, so there's no uh, no confusion about that. It's not the most elegant looking underwater combat, but uh, it'll work just fine. So I've seen some questions on fish, so I would really like there to be um, sort of in some areas, sort of beautiful tropical fish um, that's slightly going outside of um, our remit, unfortunately, to sort of get the base, um, base game done, but that's something that I'd like to do in the future. I also just noticed a slight issue with our uh, Imperial Legion armor. There's some clipping in first person where you. Uh... Oh yeah, I know, I know that. I need to um, sort of wait a it's, it's, it's just just in first person. It's um, where the um, arms get uh, clipped off from the torso. I just realized I I went to the wrong place. I thought I was going to the alien ruin, and I went to one of the forts. Because I'm an idiot. Perks and skills are currently as they are in um, in our development, as they are in Skyrim. But that's something which we might be looking to change in the future. So it wouldn't be necessarily exactly like Oblivion. Um, it'd probably be some sort of uh, happy place between the two. If I was to take a guess, because there were there were positives and negatives. I think our, our main ethos is to make um, remake Oblivion. I also see questions about VR, which is very interesting because uh, I didn't know there's such a big VR community. Um, I don't have a VR headset. Definitely one of our most common questions. <laughs> I don't have a VR headset. Um, I mean, I would but be. Yeah, I would be happy to try it out. Riesler does. Yeah. Uh, I know for a fact that people have tried it out in the past, and it it seemed to work. I've, I've, I've got one, but I don't, I don't have Skyrim. There's, there's no reason it shouldn't. Um, yeah, I mean, not it gone should. out of our way to make yeah. it not possible. So, uh, uh, the, the and I guess if like we don't do it, so a modder could probably fix it after, if like. You know. So if, if effectively, it... modding Sky Oblivion will be the same as modding Skyrim. Yeah. So, and some things that were made for Skyrim might even work off the bat for Sky Oblivion. It's worth mentioning with uh, VR, uh, a lot of our quests currently rely on SKSE. Uh, so we will have, either we or a modder will have to uh, update our SKSE plugin to support VR. But you can absolutely explore the world without issue in VR, I imagine. Yeah. I still need to get a VR headset at some point. And a Steam Deck. And and a new PC. Spe Sorry, go on. <laughs> I was just going to answer. There uh, keeps popping up about spellcrafting. Yeah, spellcrafting will be in the uh, in the project as well. I think our challenge there is to um, 
maybe try and ground it a little bit so it's not so incredibly game Hell <laughs> no, no. That, see, that's the opposite of what you want to do. You want to you give people the power to make their dreams come true. And I've, I've used spellcrafting. Yes, you can make extremely overpowered spells, but there is a certain balance to it because really powerful spells will cost a ton of gold and a lot of magic to cast as well so yes it's overpowered but it i th i feel like just having the the cost of of like the, the monetary cost of gold in game plus the amount of uh, magic out you need to cast like the really powerful spells should be enough to uh to not make it like too easily um breakable for uh, for the player and I will say that one of the things I love so much about Oblivion is how broken spells could be. And if I can make broken spells in Sky Oblivion, I will throw a hissy fit. I'm I'm actually quite happy with the way the helmet turned out. So this this is an, so um, the armor model itself here was made by uh, Roy, one of our really talented 3D artists, and then I did the implementation. So I used the I took the UV uh, mesh and then I made the beast race helmets and I made the shield also on the side, which I yeah, think it looks really nice. Looks like the same set, which is what I was aiming for. <laughs> but the um, particular attention to pay to the gemstone on the uh, the helmet. Yeah, I did notice that actually. Which is a um, it's a little trick in uh, making gemstones in Skyrim using sort of layered uh, flip normals. Uh, Shadow, I don't have that sword. What I do have... What was that thing again? The the butt, the butt slapper? The butt slapper one? Uh, trebuchet or... Uh, no. Submission? Something of submission? Trebuchon? Tr tr Truncheon. Tr who, who here speaks English and can tell me what that means? I speak English and can't. Wait, what, what was the... Say the word again. Tr tr Wait. <laughs> <laughs> we broke, Run, we broke trun, him. Trun, Truncheon? 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 Truncheon, it's a... Uh... Truncheon! Yeah, oh, it's it like the handle oh, of a spear the, or something. Um, the club. It means a, a, a baton. Club made a the, the chat says. I think the word is like the uh, handle of a spear or something. Fancy. Yeah, yeah baton. Is, isn't yeah. there an expression that goes something along the lines of don't, don't slap the hand that feeds you or something like that? Don't yeah. bite the hand that feeds you. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, okay. Slap the other cheek. Wait, no. That's not it. Turn the other cheek, that's it. <laughs> slap the other cheek. I, I made that dirty, I know. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so let's actually give this uh this mace. It's it is technically a mace. Let's see how uh how well it holds up against flesh. I'm sure there's something we can kill down here. Uh, okay. ju just like in Oblivion, there aren't any children in the world. But that's something people might want to mod in. It might not be one of the first mods I download. You cannot marry Manamarco. Sorry. <laughs> well, now, now you've said that, that's going to be the first mod <laughs> that I download. <laughs> Uh, we I do, do have... um sorry you go no you you're on the other side of the world so you uh you can go first <laughs> uh just going to answer that we do have uh custom pieces of music uh custom soundtrack that is absolutely beautiful yeah so we got um we got unique music for the different regions of Cyrodiil. we're we're not we're not removing any of the original music but we are adding uh, music of our own. So uh, we have, for instance, the Clovi or the the Gerald Mountains here, which have their own music. The Valus Mountains, the uh, the Nibbin region here, which has their own music. Uh, Blackwood, the Great Forest. Yeah, the Great Forest has uh, unique music too. Uh, Clovian Highlands has new, uh, unique music. The Westweld, and then finally uh, the Gold Coast. They all have their own tracks. They won't continuously play, but they will trigger when you enter the region. 
which is uh, very awesome. Uh, as well as uh, someone by the name of Fabulous Krusty just rating us. That's also pretty awesome. Cheers. Uh, I've, I've seen some questions around player homes. So at the, at the moment, all the player homes available in Oblivion are available. I don't know if we're changing the sort of fixing up that you can do to make it more like the Skyrim system. Uh, that might be my quest uh, question. But any any of the mods, and um, there's a couple of mods I really like. There's some where you go camping and lay out a tent and a sleeping bag and um, build a house anywhere. Those, I believe, should be pretty much um, plug in and play. I love this shield so much. And that shield is actually very, very low poly, which is why I love the shield. Made by Borks. One thing I'm a bit um, conflicted about, like after the, the project wraps up, I'm gonna have so much information in my head that I don't know what to do with. Like for instance, for, for a lot of the weapons, so I, I can tell you who who made what I'm wearing right now. The the mace was made by Shadow, the shield was made by Borgs, the armor was made by Spiros, and the ring, if I'm not mistaken, is made by uh, Cynthia. What, what am I going to do with that knowledge? I can't, I can't apply for a job and tell them I know all this stuff. You know, that that's not going to get me anywhere. What what, what am I going to do with all this hard life I, space? I it's just I full. Dis I disagree. I, I disagree with that, actually, Kyle. Because you were able to say you've worked with all these talented, awesome people. And you've uh, led a project with so many different people from different parts of the world for several years. So I think that's actually a really good thing to say in an interview. And then they'll continue asking if I can provide contact information for all those talented people. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, wow, that is really impressive. So do you know their mobile number or email where we can contact them? Because it sounds like they were a great bunch. And I will have well, to say, yes, they were. They were a great bunch. Well, I, I, I do oh. want to say, I've, I've seen... No, I've, I've no, sorry. <laughs> Fish um, <fiend>, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was just going to make the joke that, you know, they'd also ask for, you know, you know their first names. <laughs> oh, yes. For, 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 <laughs> I've, I've sent, I think, uh, two dozen t-shirts to people at this point. Uh, so I, I got home addresses, phone numbers in some case, I get everything. So double cross me and you'll be sorry. Kyle has just gone to my favorite place in the game. This was uh, your... made by Lutus, and uh, with me providing encouragement and uh, advice. Uh, this is Mud Crab Picnic Island, and you'll <laughs> find uh, two mud crabs who are having a lovely picnic. And here's your clutter you were asking for. It is. So, so these are the uh, new, new plates for everyone who's interested. I made them based on the old Oblivion plates with a sort of uh, drip gloss. I spent a long time actually looking at um, how pottery is made. I'm trying to get light to actually shine on them so you can see it properly, but... And the, uh, the, same, the same for the, the, uh, this rug here is actually a remake of the Oblivion. One which I thought uh, the original Oblivion rug Thank looked you. like a bath mat, and I didn't want to change a thing about it. So all I've done is sort of made the one again go. with a high, high, higher resolution, a few changes to the colours. And I think that this is this is the kind of stuff that people easily overlook. It's that the the game the game is not just you know shiny armors and pretty plants. It's also plates, wine. Tomatoes, cheese, a rusty it, it knife. It took me a couple of days to make all of that cheese. And if you if you pick up the cheese and uh, turn it around in inventory, you'll see it's actually got lots of little holes in it. So immersive. It also is nice to show that some some uh, ingredients we actually don't have in the game. So there's this uh, mutton. How do you pronounce that? M mutton? Yep. Uh, which was uh, ripped from Oblivion, because it's a placeholder asset. Still using the beautiful 
texture that came with it. Um, and that still needs to be touched by one of our 3D artists to, uh, to not look like that anymore. And I see a pair of shoes. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not making them up. <laughs> really? No, I'll, I'll probably end up making them up. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, that's, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty extreme, my dude. No, I, I feed, uh, I feed my cat. So much, so much meat. I do very much love this area. Any other areas we should quickly take a look at? I know we said we were gonna end the stream like 25 minutes ago, but... Oh, you know what? I will do a very quick tour through uh, the Clogan Highlands, because I didn't show it off. It wasn't on my list because, well, I, I, I worked on the Colovian Highlands and I would like to show off other people's work, as, at least as a priority, but I think we've shown pretty much everything there is, so no harm at this point. I am quite pleased with how it turned out, I will say. There's some, some nice bits. There's some other bits that I'm not super happy with, but it looks fine as well. Loading screen again. I've seen a question on um, voice lines. Uh, so at the moment, if you own Oblivion and Skyrim, it'll port the voice lines. Okay. So to clarify that, you will need to own Oblivion and Skyrim for the mod. Indeed. Uh, yes, this was Redguard's artwork. Um, here is the Clovian Highlands then. Um, quite a lovely... Lovely area in the game. Um, I... Th this may low-key be my favorite part of this region in the game, simply because... Um, as soon as I started working on the Colovian Highlands, I really wanted to make a, a valley somewhere um, between two mountainsides. And I, I couldn't for life me find any place to do so until I came across this little spot, which has... It's a bit difficult to see with the fog, but there's um, a mountain range on the left and a mountain range on the right, which is more or less exactly what I needed to, uh, to make this little... No area here. Uh, just a question there on um, Skyrim Edition. So the team we're working with uh, Skyrim Special Edition. And yes, that's correct. That that'll be the version required. Also, one thing I really enjoy about level design, and I'm sure maybe Riesler can share a few words on this as well. He is the uh, the level design lead, or one of the two level design leads for Skyblivion. Um, what I really like is doing uh, visual storytelling. It's not always possible, but sometimes there's locations in the game like here where we have a master destruction trainer who hangs out at the shrine of... who is this? Kinnereth. Um, so I made a little camp for them. Um, I gave them some potion of destruction and like a, a training dummy with some scorch marks um, as like, I don't know, a bit of uh, supporting level design for the for their character, and it's stuff like that that I quite enjoy. And to be honest, I'm gonna miss a lot <laughs> when this is finally done and there's nothing left to do. Um, because I guess I'm just gonna have to go back to playing games, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I can go back at this point. You know. Be gone, stranger. I have business with Kinnereth's shrine, and I will not. Anything for you, uh, Risa? That stands out a lot. On things that you uh, you've maybe made in the game so far, or you've planned on doing. Stop talking now. Have we uh, have we lost Riesler? Potentially. We may oh. have. I can't hear him. 
The, the music that's playing in the background, by the way, is the, the track for the Clovian Highlands. So as I was talking about before, um, every region of the game has uh, a unique track that will play when you first explore it. And this one is for uh, for the Clovian Highlands. Well, we're having a few questions on Radiant AI, Scott. Well, that depends on what you mean by Radiant yeah, AI. It's because... only in the Skyrim framework. Uh -oh. it, uh, it had Radiant AI as well. Um, if you mean Radiant Quests, where... What's going on there, Carl? Um, Is that Lex? <laughs> Think so? Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, S Skyrim had radiant quests that are um, that were generated by the game and kind of randomly selected locations. Uh, Sky Oblivion won't have any of those on launch. Uh, things like uh, radiant AI in the sense of like NPCs dynamically choosing uh, how they're going to complete certain things that is toned down a bit in Skyrim compared to Oblivion. Uh, so uh, do we've done our like, best to... I do not like the stretchy boy. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not How sure what this happened? is. I don't there's think a, that's There's us. a dead body here? I don't a naked body? I think that is a... Oh, it's a bended bowman? I What's... think that's an engine bug. Oh no, it's completely decapitated. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, keep keep uh, going, Fish Fiend. No, I essentially said everything I was going to say, just that uh, we'll do our best to replicate Oblivion's AI um, for the NPCs, their schedules and stuff like that. We'll do our best to get it as similar as possible. Uh, but the nature of the difference between the games means there might be some slight differences if you really look closely. But in some places, that will be a massive improvement. The chat had the best idea. You should have resurrected him. I think that would be oh, the worst yeah. idea. <laughs> Immediate game crash. <laughs> Uh, they're still there. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, will you make forks, <laughs> spoons, knives, brooms, and such equipable as weapons? I think we've made our broom equipable as a weapon. So, we year, years ago, and I'm talking like five years ago, probably at this point, there was someone who made all the equipment, like hammers, brooms, scythes, uh, pitchforks, etc., into weapons with like low damage output, but still weapons. Um, but that plugin was never merged into the game, and I for the life of me have not been able to find it. So it's something that someone would need to do. Uh, that but would, the thing that is, would take no time at all to, to, to redo, and that, that that's probably something for a mod after. But that would. Be... Yeah. So what, what I was uh, gonna say is that it, it's it's one of those things where it's just it's not really important or like. MVP worthy, like minimal viable product worthy. Um, and because we really want to get into this mindset of finishing what we started, we don't want to take on small things because as, as small as this one thing would be, there is maybe a hundred other th little things that we've thought of. And the, the problem is that they, they add up. So like one small thing doesn't matter, but it's sort of like starts this snowball effect and if you say yes to someone doing the uh the the little like equipable weapons for equipment then you kind of also have to say yes to all the other just as reasonable requests people have had or and you, you don't still necessarily have. know whether that'll snowball so if something's done on sort of the side will that cause other issues somewhere else and then can be a slippery slope into just becoming a time sink which we would rather avoid and sort of get the base game out there than any other stuff we can more than fix if we go or other people can have a crack yeah to be fair the the game has been a pretty big time sink as is already so you know and it's there's no need to add more to our already uh heavy load Re rebel is good at keeping us on task uh so much now my He's given me the nickname in the Discord server for quick fix. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'll always.
always say, oh, that won't take long at all. Do that. And then it does. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Are you keeping floating paintbrushes? Negative. It's it's interesting. There was um, there was someone I forgot what the magazine was called, but they sent me an email yesterday uh, with some basic questions about Skoblivion that they wanted to have answered to write an article, and that was one of their questions as well. And it it, it pops famous, up famous quite books. often. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 easy answer is no. Um, simply because it's it's a it's an Oblivion engine specific bug. Yeah. So, so you'd have to. So yeah, yeah, you'd have to put in the work to make that yeah. bog work somehow, which is madness. <laughs> um, what, did that? Can somebody clip that, please? Did you guys see that? I, I missed it. It looked like the 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 Xivali, Like I used the the the, the rose on the on the the rat, and it looked like the Xivali just spawned in, grabbed the rat, and teleported out again. I didn't see him hit the rat at all, I just sort of grabbed it and run. Oh no, never mind, it's there. <laughs> or is it? I don't- I didn't, I didn't see it fly over there though. I don't know, may, I, maybe I'm wrong. I just- I'd like to see the clip back though, because that looked... awesome. And scary. I do really like our rat models as well. They're nice chubby boys. Oh, and um, our new great models. These you mean? Uh, yeah, if you look in the bucket. All made in Blender. Oh, the grape. Sorry, I heard great. And I'm like, well, it's a, it's a gate, <laughs> not a grate. <laughs> I think that I made those with the Geonodes when Geonodes first came out in Blender. I'm going to pretend that I know what that is. Uh, so, Ravana some, some is people, if, any, if anyone on the stream knows what I just said, then please volunteer. <laughs> R Ravana is the one who made the, the rap model, by the way, and he made it for Skywind, actually. Like... Ten years ago, at this point, maybe. He's cute. That that chunky boys. And he was no, nice enough to no, let us use his own. Way. Yeah, they're they're really good. Ravana is a really talented uh, 3D artist. Are you theoretically allowed to publish on Steam, or does it get its own separate launcher installation? Um, in order to release anything on Steam, we need to be in talks with. I love the bees that I added. We need to be in talks with uh, both Bethesda and Valve. Um, and to be honest, I have no idea if we can make that work. Um, we've, we've been in talks with Bethesda somewhat in the past. Um, never about something like this. Uh, Enderall was released on Steam, which is another total conversion mod for Skyrim. Uh, the only difference is that it was not using any intellectual property, like it was a new story um, using uh, assets from Skyrim and assets that they created from scratch, whereas we are using intellectual property, like un untouchable stuff, like the, the original story that, as weird as it is to say, it, well, it's not weird at all actually, like, it doesn't belong to us. Um, so whether or not we're actually allowed to publish it anywhere, that is completely up to um, Bethesda, uh, and especially if you want to put it on Steam, they need to be involved in that as well. Whether or not that can happen, no clue. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we, uh, when we get to it, I suppose. The, um, uh, what we just saw with textures loading in, uh, that's one of the issues that we're currently facing in the game, uh, that I think we can resolve by reducing uh, some of the, the texture resolution that we have in the game so far. Um, I think we LOD, need to do a big... L L LOD, LOD and um, collision planes are also part of that, so the yeah. te textures are getting loaded off of the... Um, in, into the Drevel's graphics card memory, and it's just throwing a bit too much at it than it can handle, so that can be either textures are too large, there's um, too many textures that's calling up, the textures aren't yeah. uh, as efficient as they could be, and so I learned something quite interesting uh, a few weeks ago, which is that if the um, textures aren't square, and we're doing a um, sort of two two square across textures, quite a square, um, then that can actually be more efficient than just loading up a 4K 
texture. Instead of having two 2K textures um, in a row. Will there be a 2025 release party and am I invited? I think it'll, it'll, it'll be more like a, a funeral almost, you know, it'll be the end of an era. I will be out of friends, I'll be out of a hobby. What am I going to do with my life? There's nothing to celebrate there. You're I'm not invited free. though. I don't want to be free. I want to be chained to my desk, I want to have a purpose. What is my purpose? Give me a purpose. This is a lovely little location I worked on. Uh, Clef J also worked on this. It's uh, an unnamed village that I think is contender for village of the year. Maybe even village of the the decade or village of the game. Oh, is, it, is this the village, village of the year one? This is what? There's, the, there's one village that's lovely and then it gets, gets attacked later. We oh no no! This this it. is this is not that oh, one. This maybe, is just a really. We might put flies around saying, "Come visit the village for the year," and then you get there, and uh, everything's gone very wrong. Want to shoot? Uh, there aren't any quests or anything that actually point you towards the village in the first place. You could start a four collection. I'll think oh, so, about it. So we we do use the um, so you'll own Oblivion and Skyrim. So we port the um, original Oblivion lines, and it's amazing how having um, the same voice lines come out of the new Skyrim faces. Yeah, the, one of the coolest things currently in the game is that uh, for certain quests, NPCs will be very reactive uh, in their facial animations. So early this stream, we did a quest for the Jumbo Potatoes uh, lady, the Khajiit. And when you hand in the, the potatoes, you can see her face flaring up, um, which is a feature that is supported by Skyrim, but Maybe it's just me, but I've not seen it used that prominently. I, I, I never really noticed it that much until Skoblivion. Um, and I was really impressed with it because at the time I thought one of you guys did something like groundbreaking uh, with facial animations and it turns out it's just like a, a scam thing that maybe just isn't utilized as much. Seen a uh, question on 4K textures. So I, I would, in my opinion, lots of the um, so you see an 8K, 16K mod on the Nexus. That is probably a bit overboard. Um, so we've tried to maximize. Uh, we're trying to find the sweet spot between texture space and performance and the uh, sort of obviously the size of the asset. So for something like a ring or a coin, it's going to have a small texture size, but something like the texture the car's running on now, we'd want that to be higher. So I, I think we'd probably be aiming for just 2K. Yeah, I was, I was talking about... So we have a, a private Discord server, the developers, where we talk a lot of like, I don't know, logistics and we do a lot of development together. Um, in like the Discord chat rooms. Um, and we were having a discussion either today or it was yesterday um, about how previously, so far, we've always always had 4K texture for the landscape, um, which you can tell because there's no pixels or nothing, which is great. Uh, but what we're noticing at the moment is that uh, the game, like we're, we're putting our hardware through a lot running Scablivian. Um, and in the end, it needs to be more optimized so that it's not just people with, you know, really good hardware that can play the game, but also, you know, your average Joe with like a 1080. I think the, 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 um, the element is, so the, all, all of the, or the vast majority of the assets are remade or maybe slightly modified of this Skyrim meshes, the Skyrim vanilla meshes they have very low resolution textures and even if we were to um, use them in the game often it's hard to see what they are so we're in a position where we're a modern community and we're lots of different people are working on lots of different things so it's much harder to do texture use which is something that we 
were very, very efficient on in Skyrim. So they started off architecture, I believe they started off doing the architecture by pre-making the texture packs, then they would make the models. We are sort of in a situation where we'll have different people working on different architecture sets from all across the realm, and they won't, um, they might not necessarily have access to what other people are working on, or be as in line as they would be if they were all working maybe in the same office building. Yeah. So it's it's a lot harder, and it's something which we need to be really tough on, sort of keeping down the texture size, reusing it where we can, and making it clear where that's something you should do or you shouldn't do. So something like a sign, you can't reuse that texture because it's got writing on it. Something, um, uh, sort of like jumping on, uh, working in office. Um, like I said, we sometimes work together on Discord and we have online chats. But um, when the uh, the COVID lockdowns were happening, I for one really, really appreciated um, having Skyblivian around because not 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 being able to go to work, it sounds really good in practice, but you're gonna get bored really quickly. Um, and having a hobby like Skyblivian is the perfect time to, you know, like pick up some extra stuff as you're waiting for work to come back or life to go back to normal um, and I noticed that a lot of people myself included were hanging out in discord a hell of a lot more just to get you know a bit of social interaction and talk to people because being cooped up all day watching YouTube Twitch Netflix and I don't know TV sounds sounds better than it is in reality at least it was for me I, I, I need to to keep busy so that was um it was quite a cool time to see everyone coming together like that and in a you know and obviously a bad time for everyone we made something uh, out of it which was uh pretty nice i, I didn't want, want to interrupt because i totally agree with the sentiment but i loved how Revel paused by the deer, and I could hear the cogs turning in his head, going, "How many deer have I killed in this stream?" <laughs> I, I, I did, I did contemplate actually killing him. Yeah. Oh, so I have is to anyone, that, is yeah. anyone doing a count, by the way? <laughs> How many deers have uh, met their end? One more for the pile. Show us some viable homes. Um, Reese, oh, is Reese there? Oh, you are here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. So, I guess Rose Thornhill is Rosenhill is the one that's mostly done, but you will fall through the ground. The collisions aren't working in that. Okay, well, I can, I can show it up with TCL. Do you have the COC command for that? Let me check. I love the deers, they were made by Roy. They were. Can someone maybe, uh, Glitz, give Roy a shout out? Um, as I said, I appreciate everyone following on Twitch. Um, rest assured, uh, up until 2025, there will be a lot of streams from myself, but also from a lot of other developers uh, in the team. That's and there's actually a stream, uh, sorry, there's actually no, a no, stream team me. called uh, The Adventurers, which you can see below the stream uh, that you're watching right now, where a bunch of people, including uh, Fish Fiend, X Riesler, D Keys, Roy, and a lot of other people um, are a part of, which you can give a follow um, and yep. watch them, uh, you know, work on all kinds of facets of the game quests, 3D, level design, nav mesh, um, you name it. I, I am on that too, under Doig Song. I've been a bit busy recently because I brought a house, but I am still alive. <laughs> so. Does it mean we have to address you as Lord? Yes. Doig song now. Uh, yeah, that's so, not reasonable. That's not reasonable. Uh, test for <laughs> skin guard house for sale. Okay. Uh, thanks for the uh, the raid, by the way, Forest. And uh, Razor, thank you very much as well. Uh oh. Oh, no, no. You don't trust. Yeah. Oh. Wait. 
<laughs> purchase bonus furnishings yes. from my house. He said, standing in the void. <laughs> this is me after I've moved into my new house. Okay, the the, the <laughs> house is gone. Okay, well, that's... Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was here before. <laughs> oh, well. I swear it was here a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Anyway, so well. there's, there's the player home. It's, uh, this is what is you it, get, guys. Exactly what you'd want out oh, of see? a house. Yeah. <laughs> Endless void. Okay, Wait, did it just appear? What? 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 It's supposed to be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> take the letters on the floor then. Maybe that will force it. Read the letters on the floor. Or on that table. Oh, okay. I mean, that's the upgrades, but... So the, the base mesh should still be here. Oh, you might have... Oh, yeah, I think you might not have the ESP that uh, enables the quest, though. I completed buying a house. Oh, yeah, all kinds of stuff oh, appeared yeah, yeah. all of a sudden. This, oh, yeah. This is, this is old ground, Ooh. but it stands repeating. This is a feature. That is that is cool though. So wait, you um you complete those missions and that way you clutter up the house. Yeah, you buy the upgrade. You buy the upgrades. Like oh, uh, check 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 out the uh, really the, awesome. The wall upper hangings. floor might work. The upper wall, floor might work if you wall take a dwarf. Made by Captain Moran. Oh yeah, Captain Moran. He's been uh, fantastic. Uh, can we yeah can we get a spe special shout out to Captain Moran too? He's been doing a lot of work recently. And rugs if you can, made by uh, yours truly. Find him. And as far as we have the haunted mansion exterior down, but the interior is still a uh, work in progress. Right, let's see if the top floor actually exists. Oh, look at that. Should also give a shout out to uh, one of our devs, Nighthawk, who developed the quest for all the player homes. So that uh, all that lovely furniture appears when you uh, pick up the notes. You have to jump on that, uh, yeah, that's, he's perfect. If you jump on the, <laughs> the floor is, yeah, on the, the, the bookshelves, I think you have to jump around to get to the secret. There's a quest thing, there's a quest that will be active in here as well. There's like a secret note. Uh... Behind you, I think, on the, le the ledge above your study, right? I see my study when, when, when stuff Yeah, it should be up there. there, yeah, it should be up there on the wood, <laughs> but yeah. I hadn't seen that we decorated these already, and that looks awesome. It's really nice to see the furniture and the wall hangings and the carpets. All Work in progress. Actually, yeah, like the the furniture is uh, is still the Oblivion uh, placeholders, but we have someone working on uh, the new upper class furniture, and it looks really really nice. Wow! Look at that, Umbra. Yeah. No way in hell I'm going to put that on a display case, though. That thing really belongs in my hands. Ooh, nice ring. Okay, anything else we should uh, we should check out that's maybe a little bit less broken? Uh, uh, comment there, you guys are not looking for any more voice actors, correct? Uh, correct, we're not looking ever for any voice actors. I mean, if you want to show the player house from Oblivion, uh, other than that, I think as far as player home goes, yeah. Was the Unreal ahead. Engine used with this as well? I'm afraid this is all in the creation kit. Uh, creation engine. Though some of our modelers will use um, Unreal Engine just while they're building the asset. Because we yeah. do need to go through a bit of a bit of a grating texture conversion process. Yeah, but yeah, you, the, the game won't break if you add the letters in the console. I mean, the letters are what you buy off the, the merchant. For the upgrade, anyways. So, if you wanna use the console to furnish your house, by all means. The um, this may be good to mention as well. The Imperial City architecture is still being worked on. So, these walls are actually from Oblivion. We do have 4K textures on them, which were made by someone, I think, honestly, in 2015, a long time ago, um, or 2016, after we had the first uh, reveal. Uh, video on YouTube um, but most of what you see here uh, has actually not been recreated and it's currently being worked on by Kazuhide is it Kazuhide what? or Kazuhide? I always forget I just say Kazu Kazuhide. Um, and he is working uh, together with Happy Birds and Tiber uh, on getting all of the Imperial City remade which is a massive massive undertaking 
what you did see in a quick preview, um, their work on the Talos District, which so far is looking really good. And if you haven't seen it yet, uh, go watch the trailer on YouTube right now. It's been live as of this Sunday evening. Um, if you are watching it and you haven't yet done so, please give it a like and leave a comment on what your favorite part of the trailer was. Um, I try to go through all the comments. There's a reason why everything has a heart. Um, before I go to bed and after I wake up, I try to spend like half an hour reading all the lovely messages from people. So if I haven't gotten to you yet, I'll try to get to it um, after the, the, the stream. What is your most favorite asset you got to redesign? So that sounds like a question for Doig, because that sounds like oh, a three D thing. Um. Um. Ooh. Not not so much redesign, but I, I did quite enjoy doing the. If we can pop over to Namira, we can have a look at Namira's statue. Quite a few. I, I really enjoyed remaking the rugs as well. And there's a uh, the few weapons I've worked on as well. Actually, I have your ring. Uh, oh, Namira. Uh, yeah, Namira's ring. I don't. Wait, do I? No, I don't. Um... I think uh, the statue of Namira is definitely the one I spent the most time on just because it's such a complicated asset. Uh... Alright. Actually, the effect on the Namira's ring is really cool, Kyle. If you get into a fight. Um, retaliate against attacks with a surge of Namira's corruption, dealing one damage per second for 12 seconds. Enemies that die within four or more, uh, enemies that die with four or more stacks expel the corruption, damaging nearby targets and making them run in fear. Whoa. Ooh. That's, uh, you don't want to get punched by that one. It reminds me a little bit of, um, do you know those, uh, lollipop? Um, rings you had as a kid? It is a, it is a chunky ring. <laughs> I like it though. Through the at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you're not going to be able to uh, do much about that because it also still needs to be on your finger. Yeah. That's that's just the, the perfectionist in you. So uh, that's, th that's one of the things with the rings, because um, in Skyrim the rings are all often just very simple bands. Try to make stuff pop a bit. So a bit, a bit of clipping, I think, is a is a good compromise. Yeah, for sure. I'm actually gonna test out this ring. Oh shit! I I didn't realize I'm a Khajiit, so I'm not gonna punch him. I'm gonna claw. Ooh. Ooh. Cassie. Do your worst. And if you step back. Yeah. No, there you go. Run away. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I love our unique effects for all these artifacts and stuff. It's really really cool. Gold brand as well. Damn. I've not used uh, chill rent yet today. I just realized. Or the Actually, baser. That's, uh, that's an interesting one I was meaning to ask a uh, fisherman about. So to start Namira's quest, you need to be gross and have a really bad reputation. How, how are we handling sort of the start of that quest? A series has done that know. quest, hasn't he? Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but give me one second and I'll have a look and find out and get back to you on that. Awesome. Yeah, it should it should already be in in. Uh, or, well, I'm not sure if it's in game, but it's done. The quest, all the. All the data request lines has been have been finished as of last year, um, which is quite an accomplishment. I I believe one of the most uh, difficult uh, data quest lines actually to figure out for Sirius was um, uh, Periite's um, quest because 
The, the quest for Periite starts with all of the cultists being frozen in time due to a ritual they tried to perform that went bad. Um, and in Skyrim there wasn't really a good way in which uh, NPCs being frozen was utilized from what I remember. Um, so Sirius had to figure that out and in the end he kind of made the NPC sort of T-pose. Uh, which is more or less the exact same thing. And it worked really well. Something something is stopping at a three hour mark. Still going on an hour later. Yeah, I was supposed to stop an hour ago. I don't think anyone's complaining about that. I think my uh, my managers might tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm actually going on holiday uh, this weekend, so I need to uh, give 110% this week to make sure all my real life work is wrapped up. I'm a professional though, so so far I'm on schedule. I, I do think it's very cool that we get to do a stream for these guys from four different countries. Oh yeah, that's true, think, yeah. Uh, at least three different time zones, right? Yeah, you're from the UK. Yep. Uh, Fish Fiend is from uh, Australia. Riesler is from Sweden. I'm from the Netherlands. Yep. Might be interesting actually to see from the, the, the people who are watching right now where they're from. If they don't mind sharing. See where the... Uh, see what countries we, we might be missing from the chat. Germany, Poland, US, Britain. Brazil, USA. Netherlands, Canada, Wales. Oh, cool, you're English. <laughs> Estonia, Czech, Kazakhstan, Switzerland, Kali, Norway, Ireland, New Zealand, represent. Holmes, Italy, Finland, Korea, Austria. Scotland also represent. Serbia. I feel like we're still missing some countries though. Ukraine. I think we just listed all the countries. I think that was all the countries. Nah, not even close. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting location by the way because this is where a quest takes place that turned everyone invisible. Uh, there's, a, there's a bug at the moment actually. As you can see this sheep is not invisible. But this one is. If you can, if you can make make out that that is a sheep, you can kind of see through him, ish. I love the sheep. I will never get bored of the sheep. Yeah, they're really cute. I also I saw a rake cornel there. Nice try. From the sober part of Ireland, what's that like? They're actually really difficult to see. I know there's a guy here somewhere in the farm as well. An orc. What, you need the to mouths are broken? I don't think so. This, this, is, this is probably a good example to show us some of the plants, Rebel. Oh yeah, sure. While, while you're in the uh, field. So we uh, we are looking for people to help out with making plants for uh, for Skeblivian. And one of the, one of the things that would really help us would be sort of just photos of leaves. And I, th I think I actually have remade the corn meshes, but they don't seem to be on your screen. The um, the challenge with remaking flora uh, in this case is that we have been using the original meshes from Oblivion as placeholders. So we need people to make the new mesh in approximately the same length and width um, so that there's no clipping or issues uh, when we're replacing them in game. Um, this is an example of plants that have actually been made. The pumpkins, which look pretty nice. Um, the melons, uh, I think are remade as well, I want to say. And so, sort of even, even if anyone would be able to provide high quality flat lighting, um, pictures of even um, cabbage leaves or melon leaves or anything along those lines because we don't want to 
take a picture off Wikipedia or uh, accidentally steal something from Getty Images. As, as well as a, there's a few plants that don't actually exist in real life, like the known root leaves. So I had to do some procedural texturing. Try and remake this weird glowy purple leaf. We um we also still need someone to re remake the oblivion logs. I think I think we we've given out this claim to f three or four separate people <laughs> over the course of the project. It's a photogrammetry gold mine. If you if you like photogrammetry but you don't necessarily like modeling, um, then if you were to send us um, logs, like so roughly like the the length and the shape of the Oblivion one, so we can sort of just slot it in. So we call, we call those direct replacers. So I should same, force my brother to help us. <laughs> what did you say, uh, Reason? So I should force my brother to help us then. Yes. That's what he, do, he, he does, photo, tug, that word. Photography. Photomotography, 3Ds. Fo yeah. Photomotography. Yeah, the 3D scan with photo. Wait, it's photomotography? Yeah. Doig okay. will correct us anyway. It's You're just fine. making up words now, what? <laughs> the, the word you said. You Photogrammetry. Know yes, that word. Yeah. Photogrammetry. So that's uh, a <laughs> friend of on stream, that'll be getting a mobile. You take a bunch of photos uh, of an object. Yeah, yeah. But ideally, because we're putting it in an environment with its own lighting, it needs to be taken in flat lighting and be uh, high resolution. Good so puppy. We can't have um, textures with shadows baked in. Yeah, no way. Otherwise, we'd only be able to see it from one angle in a certain lighting condition. That's fine. Come on, we'll just do a picture. There's no game, there's only a picture. This is all fake. Simulator. Uh, I forgot to ask the dog for rumors. You gotta ask him about the Dark Brotherhood. Is there anything under that waterfall, Carl? I'm already past that one, but I can check this one. <laughs> How much help do you need in the coding department? So, uh, we've kind of wrapped up all the, the coding projects we had uh, ongoing. Which is uh, really good, on one hand. Uh, not so good if you were planning on helping out there, uh, unfortunately. But there's other stuff that can that people can learn. Um, nav mesh is honestly a very important and very accessible area of Skyblivian. Um, you can look up tutorials on YouTube um, to help uh, help guide you. You know what I realized? We haven't showed off um, Sanquator. Maybe that would be a, a good way to end uh, the stream. The, the real heroes are the lab meshes, because it is a slog. The game won't work without lab meshing. It's, 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 one, of, it's one of those things that um, you can get into the groove, as I understand. So it can be, um, if you're into knitting or um, sort of sewing, on a podcast. Oh, yes, it's uh, it's quite uh, relaxing. I've I've yeah. done hundreds of hours of nav meshing for the the port as well. The the, uh, the streams are also very chill places. So yeah. If you uh, yeah. look on any of the nav meshing streams, and it's not just us who does those. Uh, some other projects do. The spellbreaker have the same model and texture as Skyrim. Um, so we actually have a. Uh, a mod from the Nexus that we're using, which looks really nice. It's It was actually an Oblivion-inspired um, mod for Spellbreaker, which is why I uh, I contacted the, uh, the person who made it about it, because I was like, this is perfect. I love it. Which, now that I think about it, it's... Um, Skyrim didn't do a whole lot of unique, unique uh, weapons and and uh, items, but Spellbreaker, uh, I quite like the design of. I, I in, think that uh, there were quite a few more than um, Oblivion. I think what Oblivion did a lot was it had a unique weapon and it was the same oh, yeah. mesh. 
Oblivion often changed up uh, the 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 color, I think. I put an enchantment on it. Either either they used the, the cube maps or the enchantments in Oblivion actually made the weapon a different color. I slightly. think it's the enchantments, I don't think they had cube maps in Oblivion. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Actually did they? I should know this. I don't think they did. Give some love to the glass armor again. It is good. You should uh, get on the uh, female version as well. Because that's really well done. For glass armor? Yep. Let's elf it up. Represent. Every opportunity. <laughs> I see someone asking. Yes, uh, Sean Bean is still in Sky Oblivion. The um. The glass armor is packing quite the uh, the caboose. I think I think we might need to look at the <laughs> the proportions of the waist and the butt slightly because that is um, very very curvy. <laughs> Wait, let's see if it has anything to do with the weight slider. Gone for realism. Oops. So the weight, the weight slider, the weight slider, I think, is just the uh, caboose there. I, th I think I think that's all right for maximum weight. Says the chat of um, four guys. I like to. Uh, I like the steel armor better. It looks dope on women. Palace guard armor is also quite good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of the. The, uh, the the curvy uh, mods myself, but I do like the fact that uh, there's a community for it. Because one of the things I like best about modding, actually, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so like into it, so enthusiastic about it, is that the way I mod my Skyrim is not the way you would or a lot of other people would. Um, and I think the cool thing is that you can go on Nexus and basically turn one of your favorite games into a very personalized experience. Yeah. I, I go realism, realism, realism. Yeah, I tend to, I tend to go pretty realistic too. Um, and I, I think it's just like name name one other franchise or developer that uh, has as much support for mods as Bethesda and as big of a modding community as Bethesda. Good luck. I'm, I'm not saying there's not big modding communities, but I think for a single player game like this, it is, um, it's quite unique to have this level of support. I mean, Skyrim still today, I think is, is in the top 15 most played games of Steam. And that's, it's, it's even split between two games because there's still people playing Skyrim Legacy Edition as well. Not a whole lot. But they're still there. It's a few thousand every day. Someone has said Mountain Blade, and I think I am close to agreeing with them on that. I've not played Mountain Blade! I got pushed off the. Sorry. 
of the thing so by the water rabbit. Sky Bolivian should work with um, a special edition um, with the bits that Steam makes you download. So at the, at the moment I'm working on the latest Steam build and uh, Rebel is working on, uh, I think you've got a locked build from before the update? Before yeah, the I'm, I'm on, I'm on uh, the last uh, special edition. Yeah, I think you're on uh, one, what, what, fifteen thirty-two or whatever it is. Yeah, so we're, we're aiming, we're, we'll be aiming for it to be working with the latest Steam version on release. Yeah. Well, it will be working with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one is gonna have to downgrade or anything on Steam. It will just okay. work. In the famous words of Todd, I guess. But yeah, you realized that after you heard it. It just works. <laughs> But it, it, it does mean it'll be easier to add in fishing and things along the line. Because we've got so many awesome lake locations that every time I pass, I go, ooh, I didn't mind fishing a bit. You were saying? I was just going to say, did you stop specifically to post uh, Todd Howard faces in your Twitch chat? Actually, I, st I stopped to, to share a nice lake location. I, I posted the, the, the Todd Howard faces just before that. Get out of my chat, fish. I'm in every chat. Well, if that's not a prime fishing location, that's a uh, car's run through, then uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, quick I quickly want to focus on uh, a handful of things. Um, the Great Forest uh, was kind of made in record tempo but there's some uh, uh like of course we go for uh, I, I guess i'm i was gonna say we, we go for uh quality not quantity but that's not really true like we we need to find a healthy mix we gotta work fast and we gotta work efficiently and the work result needs to be good but i really really like the way that um the farm turned out like Jared did a really nice job, because this this farm will be under attack by goblins. Uh, there will be a quest for you to defend the farm with the 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 brothers who uh, who occupy it. Um, when the goblins attack, the farm will be partially destroyed. Um, the fences will be will be broken down. The sheep will have been murdered, and there will be goblins pouring from these holes in the ground. Uh, near the village, as to, or near the the farm, as they're trying to uh, uh, get their hands on whatever they can find. Um, and I just, I don't know, I, I really like the way it looks. I'm not sure what else to say. It just looks cool. Was this okay. done by Jero? Yeah. It's really nice. It is really nice. So to to reiterate, you'll need both. You'll need to own Skyrim and Oblivion and have them both installed to play the mod. Something I've I've completely missed or forgotten to to talk about at all is that we also have someone working on the soundscapes for the different regions. It's a bit difficult to hear because we're yapping constantly. Uh, there's music playing as well, but you may have heard, you know. The, the wind blowing through the trees, uh, the rustling of the leaves on the ground, uh, birds in the distance. They've all been uh, added by uh, Gecko, who's on our team, who's also done immersive sounds. And I, for one, am very enthused about their work. Personally, I would like to change the, uh, the dog sounds before release because uh, you get attacked by wild dogs and I do not like the sound they make. What did we just say about focusing our efforts? <laughs> it makes me feel bad. Good. Don't kill dogs. 
play a wood elf every playthrough just so you can pacify dogs. That's a good point. Wait, why is uh, why is there an option to be a civili? <laughs> uh, it's been there for a while. Okay. Your, your Skyrim and Oblivion installs will need to be unmodded, but you can, um, if you use a program like Mod Organizer, you can have a, um, a side order version. Which, so if you if you have a Skyrim mod order set up, you should be able to set that to the side, and then you'll be able to add mods as well on top of um, on top of our mod. I don't think I've shown off the uh, the shrouded armor much. Is my bad. We went things um, like quick loot um, on default, um, but that'll be something. Actually, I'm fairly sure that would be something that would work off the bat. Quick loot probably would, yeah. I don't Actually, see any oh, reason why it won't. Depending on how it interacts with our um, slightly modified UI. Um, I think it would just take. For, if you if you're using quick loot, it uses Skyrim um, UI interfaces unless you have an, an overhaul mod for it. I've used it on my modded Skyrim playthroughs. Yeah. So your 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 best bet is to start off with a totally when when it releases would be to start off with a totally clean. Um, file without any mods apart from ours, and then to build on top of that. Um, yeah, not you know, not to be um, lots of odd mods. You might be in for a bad time. Not to be rude, but when Skyrim or Skyblaven comes out, and people start flooding the Discord with messages to help them because their game isn't working and they're loading like six hundred other mods, we can't help you because good luck finding compatibility issues. Um, for a, a big project like Skyblivian that's undocumented, doesn't doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. Um, so my recommendation as well would be to play Sky, uh, Skyblivian, um, or mod Skyblivian as you would Skyrim, uh, for the first time. You know, you add a few small things, you make sure that it says on the mod page it's compatible with Skyblivian, and take it from there. And, and try to have the mods set up from when you start the game to. Otherwise, you can end up uh, corrupting the save file and not find out for a good 20 hours or so after playing. And I'm, I'm sure lots of the um, companion modders will be wanting to have their characters adventuring around um, a of in as well. I think I've seen, I've seen a couple of um, creators that are. Uh, thinking about doing that already. Oh, I do love this area so much. This, uh, this fort turned out really, really well. You may recognize this location from the trailer, actually. Um, it was used for a very good reason. It's one of my favorite places in the game right now. Those data summons are sick. Yeah, so they're actually part of... Oh, sorry, I'm yelling into the mic all of a sudden. Uh, they're part of the new uh, unique weapon uh, enchantments. So the the, the Rose of uh, Sanguine, for starters, has a really cool new model. Um, and the new enchantment is that it summons a random data uh, to target or to attack the target. 
which I've been having a lot of fun with today. I've not actually played with this weapon until today. I thought of something you could show off. Um, you could show off some of the uh, Count and Countess portraits. With the uh, Hidemoto's art. Uh, Hidemoto's art. And I uh, did the work on the frames. Sure. Uh, disclaimer though that castles are untouched as of now. Does the Rose of Sithis have a new unique model? Yes, it does. We're getting stalked by a wolf. I've seen someone saying it's hard to mod Oblivion. Yes, it is. I, <laughs> even before I joined the Sky Oblivion project, I spent a decent amount of time trying to get the mod installed that fixes the potato faces. And partly out of that frustration is why I joined. Uh, is Leowin Castle not working for Rebel? I hang the portrait. No, I, I don't have the assets uh, for it. Okay. I think the skin grad castle is alright. Alright. Skinward Castle is a uh, big disclaimer that we've not worked on castle interior locations yet. This is ported essentially, so don't judge it too harshly. The map is big. It is a big boy map, yeah. So it's it's it's, this is, it's good to see these bits. So this is what the level designers will pretty much start off with, because we've pulled sort of the locations of everything from Oblivion, then we'll be replacing it with our own meshes and moving things around and making the location uh, unique and our own. This kind of, this uh, castle, uh, the courtyard is confusing. I think lots of the layouts are a bit confusing. Yeah, and the Oblivion castle yeah, is shit. Lo lots of rethinking. So much to remember. It's not, it's not that it's that bad, it's just like very empty. Anyway. There you go on the left, I think that's Janus Hasseldor. Janus Hasseldor of Skingrad. So strange this place. Far from main place. You're not Janus. Where is Janus? Oh god. Alright, let's not talk to her. I do really, really love the Skingrad armor as well. It's too bad the lighting doesn't show it off properly. Actually, I can fix that. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Alright, let's uh... Let's take this for a spin. I know where to go with this, actually. So I have full control of support. Lots of, lots of the team do our testing using controllers. Khajiit is so nice as well. Sorry, I'm sometimes nerding out a bit on our own uh, stuff, getting high on our own supply. Yeah, skin grade armor looks uh, really sick. I love the I love the cutout as well on the shields. It's so cool. I've seen a question on uh, a couple of questions on lock picking. Uh, so I'm not can't entirely recall where we're up to with it. Um, but we've got some ideas in making it um, more like the Oblivion side, because I, th I think everyone's uh, very good with the uh, the Sky Oblivion, <laughs> sorry, the Skyrim lock picking, and uh, same same in Fallout, obviously. So we were going to see if we could um, 
get a nice Oblivion style mini game working that's hopefully not too frustrating. The same weapon effect, see what happens until you uh, use like ranged attacks. Oh, that was crazy. You cut a butterfly in half with a flame from a distance. I get it? Yeah, I got it. Play, so playing movement, so walking, running, all of that, it'll be the standard Skyrim animations. But again, that's something which um, modders or even people in the team oh, might want to change up. <laughs> You're so happy to got that butterfly. <laughs> no, I got like four <laughs> in one hit. <laughs> Watch the stream, it starts raining butterfly parts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not really, though. See a couple of people asking about um, Aeliad Ruins. Unfortunately, I don't think Kyle has any of the Aeliad Ruins in his uh, build at the moment. Correct. So, I don't think we can show interiors, unfortunately. Okay, on that note, it's been four and a half hours. I didn't intend for the stream to last this long. Um, I really need to take a bathroom break, for one. Uh, and two, I need to get to work tomorrow as well. So, two really good reasons to um, to end it, maybe, for today. Um, to end it on a positive note, I want to say thank you guys so, so much um, for supporting us all these years. It's been... An absolute pleasure. Uh, I, for one, am very looking forward to finally finishing this project that we started so long ago. Um, but an even bigger, bigger thanks to everyone who has uh, helped out on the project. Um, big or small, it's made a huge difference. Um, many hands make light work, as they say. So it doesn't matter if someone joined the project three years ago and did three pots and then had to uh, quit because they don't have enough time or because they lost interest. Um, no matter the contribution, it's led us to where we are now. So uh, maybe if you're watching on, on Twitch and YouTube, you can uh, spam some hearts in the chat for all the developers that have helped get Skyblifi this far. And for all the developers that will stick around and the new developers that will join the team to get us to, uh, to the release. So thank you very much, everyone. And if you've got the, uh, got the skills and you'd like to be involved, we have our volunteer form at skyblivion.com slash volunteer. Um, appreciate it if in Discord you can spam it. Um, or someone from Mark post it. And the link's in the description on YouTube. Um, so I, ideally, um, it'll either be a link to your art portfolio or a mod on Nexus that you've made. Sort of it's, it's more for sort of the quest-related uh, stuff you'd be interested in. Exactly. Um, and yeah, with that said, I think we're uh, we're going to end it here. So thank you guys as well for joining the, uh, the, the call. Thanks for helping me answer all the questions. And to everyone watching, see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Take care, guys. Thanks, all. Take care.
And that was the fantastic music by Marcus, who did the music for the trailer, which we were uploading tomorrow. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Have a fantastic rest of your night. If you haven't yet watched the trailer, give it a like, leave a comment. Let us know on the stream in the comments below what your favorite part was and what you're looking forward to see next. And we will try to put it in the next developer diary. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening, day, morning, night. And yeah, thank you.